And it's <laughs> a Wednesday? Is it's a Wednesday right. today. Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, uh, where we play new games on classic consoles. And we're doing an early show today for our European viewers. That's right. I, I finished my work um, that I've been yes. doing. I've been working two jobs, and both of them finished now for the holidays. So I, it's, I don't have to um, do the show in the evening. I can We can do it at any time. And so that's just, helpful. It's yeah. nice. We can do it once in a while. Uh, hopefully we can work it into the new year a little bit oh definitely and what about next week um i'll have to see i don't know what whether the, you can even do it yeah well, okay me, it is a busy time of year let me let me look at how stuff is going i don't want to commit to anything because yeah. i just don't know right now because <laughs> yes. i haven't booked my plane ticket back and life is okay so you'll be on your way back yeah. by next wednesday or i'll okay. be on my way to oh, two. we'll see okay yeah so it's in the air yeah. but anyway we're doing this uh we try and fit early shows in as much as possible because almost everyone can watch an early show if you're not yeah. working i guess um but uh oh tanya's name still up that's there. not your name yeah all of a sudden you're me an imposter me and james got married that's oh, right <laughs> and you took my last name and you changed your first name okay we're good now uh now we're good yeah <laughs> tanya looking interesting today yeah Thanks, guys. It's, uh, it's good to... She's changed a lot. <laughs> she, she shaped her head, for that's, one. <laughs> that's right. That's a big change. Yep. She's up for a movie role that involves, you know, really short hair. It's military type thing, yep. you know. Yeah, G.I. Jane 2. Yeah. That's correct. James <laughs> fought for the European yeah. audience, man. He sure did. I'm not even yep. kidding. He was like, dude, can we do an earlier show for you guys? Yeah. Because uh, Thrust 26 and I are supposed to. We're like, come on, come on. We we don't want to stay up till four in the morning <laughs> yeah, watching the show. Yeah, very reasonable. And, and we got to mix it up, too. It's tough because yes. we've been on this. Uh, who, Grand Trooper was like, uh, uh, when I got the notification. Was <laughs> he was shocked. Up. Yeah, but I think what... what, what taking it back. <laughs> that's right, man, because yeah. we're taking our time. And it's one of those things, too, where it just takes... You know, it's it's when you have a pattern and then the yes. pattern changes. Yeah. That can be tricky for people, but, you know, why not mix things up? Yeah, and and it's a show that if you do miss it, you can see it in the archives, so you never really miss a show. I mean, you, you can miss it live, and, and it's fun yeah. talking with everybody live, obviously. Erlen reminds me I have to go to the barber, too. There you go. Yeah, that's right. I actually did it myself. It's something. Oh, it's yeah. one of my hobbies. I, I will cut my hair <laughs> occasionally. Self haircuts. Yeah, it takes yeah. A, it takes a bit longer, but it's cheaper and it's more fun, uh, <laughs> for sure. Although, Risky. Although I have messed it up a few times. Yeah. Big but, chunks. Missing. Yeah, and the, but that's why I go short. Like I can't I can't do anything long. Oh but, no no, that's that's difficult. But I'm uh, definitely gonna mess up a longer haircut than that. But just, if I make my mind up about it, yeah. I just it's nice to just, just do set it, it to two and yeah, and then you do. The sides a little bit shorter than the one, and then you're done. Uh, Ice Post is on the east coast of US. Europe is four or five hours later than that. East coast is three, and oh, then yeah. you add another four or five. Yeah, so they are seven or eight in wow. Europe from us so it works out it's like evening it's dinner <laughs> time is much it definitely is and it fills way more time too it's like a <laughs> one, shaving your own head every, you can like, only do it so much that's right every you spend about an hour every two months <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i just didn't even uh, you don't have enough time to practice it too much and... it just feels stupid to spend like um uh like like 20 to 40 dollars to have someone do 50. something i can do myself <laughs> Yeah. And um and I also don't love the I love the interaction. It's never been something I really like. Yeah. If you um, just shut down the conversation every time you go in, <laughs> you're not going to get talked to very much, especially if you go to the same person. There we go. You this is these are methods but that I have to learn. The the hairdresser I go to, he is a total geek yeah. and he likes the exact same things I do. So yeah. it's it's perfect. See, twelve yeah. euro would be about what's that's about twenty dollars here. Oh, twenty five dollars. Yeah. I mean, you're right. It's, it's like it's actually not much more. Euros on par with um, U.S. dollar. Is it? Yeah, more or less. It's the pound. The pound is the is messed like up double, one. Almost. Yeah. Um, so people are commenting on the Christmas sweater. It's the first time I've had a time to show it off on the show. Yeah. Because we started in February this year. And I saw this on another gaming show a couple years ago, and I thought, oh yeah, this is this is the perfect sweater. So you've got asteroids there Dude. up top, you've got breakout, and then you've got missile command on the bottom. It's perfect. So it is a wonderful, wonderful sweater. And I've worn it to like uh, family get-togethers. Uh, I wore it the first year, and then the second year they're like, 
you wore that last year, and I totally forgot I wore it, and it's like, oh my god, terrible. Classic <laughs> game room sweater. That's where that's where I saw it. Retro the first happy time. hour. Thanks so much. Yeah, that's where I saw it, and I saw what's his name. I haven't seen him in a while because he went on a pay channel, unfortunately. Um, he wasn't making any money on YouTube, so he had to hightail it to Amazon. So Just, hopefully he's making money there. It's tough though, because I mean, when you shift from a free product to a paid product, people don't like that. Yeah, it's really hard transition. You, I can't. You think lose of... like so much of your audience, but if that's it was his full time job. Oh, there you he go. He had to make money, or he had to just com quit it completely because it's a commitment. Yeah. And he did like a daily show, like a daily show. That's a lot of work, right? So, a hundred percent acrylic. I skip. Yeah, <laughs> it is a hundred percent acrylic. Yeah, because uh, I do not wear wool, so. I had to get something that uh, is a little bit thinner, unfortunately, mm. usually. Yeah, it feels not so soft. Um, so we are playing... Didn't, we didn't murder like nine animals to get no, it, so that's, that's We didn't one. kill any kittens that's to make one, the sweater, that's and that's Atari positive. is very happy about that. Is he on camera? A little bit. A little bit. A little you can bit. see his, his body. Yeah. So he's here. He's joined us today for some holiday games. So we're going to play some uh, Christmas-themed games, some snow-themed games. You know, uh, snow. I don't think there's any snowmen. We've got some reindeer. Let's take a look at what we've got, actually. Is it? Um, let us know, any anyone out there, is if the weather is snowing for you guys, or yes. if it's what kind of weather it is, because it's turning into that time. It I'm is. from Edmonton, and right now oh, it's God, like minus. 15 minus 20 oh, it's like yeah. these, of course. two feet of snow that's why i moved to vancouver uh <laughs> to get out of this yeah it just rains here it's quite nice even the coldest that it gets is very reasonable it's but, between zero and five that's the coldest it gets here oh, and yeah. very rarely does it dip below zero even at night yeah. and it very rarely snows in vancouver you maybe get a day or two if you're unlucky or lucky depending on your point of view you get a week yeah. maybe and everybody panics because they don't buy snow tires because it doesn't snow here so yeah. it's accidents galore i got no idea of how to do anything i know and i when i was really young i spent some time um in europe and that's one thing i do miss is that the, the snow like the uh the christmas markets there are like oh, unreal it's that's so... where they pretty much originated is the european christmas markets it's... they have them here but they're really small yeah they're not like blocks and blocks and blocks and when I'm it's sure sort are. of cold and, and snowing and and like you get a hot chocolate and there's people <laughs> and there's music it's very special so i mean we're entering into that season i mean that's what's happening now man it's crazy yeah three three degrees celsius now it's that's not too bad kind of on par with around here in vancouver yeah, I Vancouver guess... is not like the rest of Canada. Canada is cold as hell. Yeah, we are the southern... We're pretty much hugging the American border. Like, that's yes. essentially... Um, and, yeah, anything... We're on the frontier, man. You look up, and it's like... <laughs> it's bad. We're in this little little dip between mountains, ocean, and the U.S. That's right. That it's a magical area. So we're going to play some music demos off the top. Uh, two by I Esposta. Oh, I Esposta. I'm so excited for this, He's in the chat. And uh, then we're going to be playing... Well, not really playing. There's another demo. The ho 2003 Holiday Cart, um, which is put out way back. Um, then uh, four games, one of which we can't actually play. That's okay. But we'll get into what that. What do need? It'll be a test. One's called Let It Snow Not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 2011, Down the Chimney, the 2009, version. yeah, uh, I, uh, Snowflakes, 2017, which we can't play, uh, Reindeer Rescue, uh, 2005, 2006, so those are the games that we'll be playing. Yeah, Grand Trooper is like, to clarify, it was Fahrenheit, it's like, yeah, 60 degrees Celsius would be, that's uh, death. that would be something else, man. I've been in 50, and that was near death. That's I've never been in be 60, awful. yeah. So, uh, thanks to everybody who's in the chat. Uh, I supposed to, Retro Happy Hour, Thrust 26, uh, Ground Trooper, and everybody else who's lurking. And thank you to I Esposta, who just resubscribed hey. three months in a row for I Esposta. Thanks, I Esposta. Also to Retro Happy Hour, who, have now, who has now subscribed for four months in a row. That's insane. You're awesome. So, I want to thank all the Twitch subscribers. Uh, a Tasty Sandwich, Charles and Check, Gretem's Ground Trooper, I Supposed to, Jeffrey2123, Mr. Fix, Retro Happy Hour, Thrust26, 
uh, and Tiki Dan K. Thank you all so much for supporting the show. And if you want to do that, um, three months, am I still sub? Yeah, you just subbed, it said on the screen. Uh, subscribe, tier one. I don't Sub, know what I the suppose. tiers are, but I'm suspecting one is the best. I mean, like, I don't <laughs> Number one! <laughs> you rock! It's my, it's my bed. Three months, am I still sub? Yes, you are still sub. Um, if you want to also support the show, you can uh, subscribe for free. Mm -hmm. If you link your Amazon Prime to Twitch Prime and click subscribe. And thank you so much. Um, some news, uh, the trackball games that Atari Age just put out mm, a couple weeks ago now are in the mail. He just posted a bunch of pictures Ooh. of all the packages um, boxed up, like a huge number of packages. He also sent me sent me a picture of all the games in boxes on a shelf. Oh my god, so many mappies. <laughs> <laughs> so many mappies. Oh my god, just stacks and stacks of mappies. Um, so a lot of orders going out. So the trackball games, there's 10 of them. They're on their way. He um, sent me a note. Uh, we're chatting, and they are in the mail. And so they will be the first two shows of the new year. Are the trackball games? Cool. I'm gonna do five oh, and five. So I don't know if you've ever played a game. It's it's like a ball that you spin to move your character. A lot of old, old arcade games use that. I played method. some in arcades, but I okay. don't, um, I can't say that that was recent, and I can't say that I was good at them. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, I supposed to bought every trackball game plus, plus Mappy. Mappy. So we have, we will have every, every trackball game as well. Oh, so all you and I supposed of them. to. Yeah, and even Star Wars the arcade game, which is really, really looking forward to. In, in the arcade, that was actually, um, used a, um... You know, flying control. Yeah. But it's it's an aiming uh, crosshair on the screen, so it'll work really, it'll work really great. well. Yeah, it's going to be Are you a, like lot a TIE of fun. fighter or yep. like a. Yep, know, yep. Cool. Exactly. Do it. It's three stages. One's in space, shooting down um, the enemy. Yeah. <laughs> and then you fly through the towers and you shoot the towers. Oh, so it's there. like the ending sequence. Of... Yeah, and then you go along the. Um, the trench. The trench, and then you shoot the bullet down. Yeah, you decide whether to use the force or the electrical oh. equipment. No, you have to use the force. <laughs> it's all <laughs> manual. And then the Death Star blows up, and then you repeat, and it's harder. Uh, trackball games can be downloaded. Yes, they can. All of them can be downloaded. But I wanted to hold them off until we, they were released. Because two years ago, he was showing them off at, yeah. at the... Um, Portland Retro Gaming Expo, so I'm like, okay, these are coming out. I'm not going to download and play them. I'm just going to keep waiting for them to come on cartridges, and now that I have a show, it's a perfect time Hell to yeah. show them off. Yeah. So that will be lots of fun. Um, and so a lot of people helped contribute and do the hacks and converted them over. Because they're old games. They're like 80s games. All converted over to trackball games, because they were originally on joystick. But the original arcade games were all rollerball games. So now they've reverted them back to what they should have been. Because I think there weren't very many rollerball games put out. But anyway, they're on their way. So let's get into the games. First, we're going to listen to a couple music oh, I'm demos. I'm for this, man. And the first ones are going to be by Iceposta. And the first one is uh, Silver Bells. So let's switch over to that and take a look. I'm just going to take the uh, game off the screen because I didn't make a, a cart for this because there aren't really any carts. There's nothing even really to look at on these yeah. uh, because they're all sound. Actually, there is something to look at. He, um, I was supposed to make a little waveform on the left hand side. What's this Tanya? Oh, in the small just one. Small one. It's no big deal. I'm sorry. I shouldn't That's even. Okay. I shouldn't even. No, they'll about call it. me out on that. I've already switched over, so they already saw it. Ah, oh, it's too late. There we go. You're not Tanya. Okay, so let's take a look at. No more near as cool. <laughs> uh huh. Got a little waveform going there. Hopefully it's loud enough. Probably not. There we go. 
hopefully you can hear us. Yeah, we're a little bit louder. Um, so this is Silver Bells by Sposta. Um, he posted this originally, uh, December 11th, 2016. He says, unfinished, way unfinished. Posting my oh, first- said louder. Uh, I've turned it up since then. Let me know if, if it's still bad. Um, and because you, you also have to hear us. I'll turn it up a little bit more. There we go. So you're gonna be struggling to hear us. There we go. Um, posting my first attempt at this song, don't know if it'll be fixed or final before Christmas. This uses the Pitfall 3 type of three channel music with to uh, notes in tune. Because that was an issue with uh, 2600 games. That, I guess for simplicity's sake, they took the scale, or not even a scale, just a range of sounds from X to Y, and they just divided it up evenly. That's so right. <laughs> so they were thinking about it like programmers, they were not yeah. thinking about it like musicians. No, not they at all. They were not thinking about, yeah. And there's, just, there's various tones, um, there's like square wave and sawtooth, I think, and, and various other yeah. things. There's noise ones, like, uh, you know, white noise or whatever they want to classify that type of noise. But all they did for, like, the square wave is just chop it up into... I can't remember what it is right now. Um, how are you supposed to can, now? can tell us how many divisions there are? But they don't land on notes. They're, like, not quite. Just like a, 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 cent, a, a cent on. I can't remember what it's called in the music. Cent on? Uh, they're not even semi. Oh yeah, no. They're like I think cent, cent is correct because that's the hundredth of a tone. Yeah. Not evenly by one, two, thirty-two. Uh, so I guess it's divided up to thirty-two, thirty-two even tones. So if you wanted to make music, you had to kind of invent your own scale almost, or pick one that's kind of close. And they all sounded funky, like terrible. Yeah. But I'm sure you could harmonize. I mean, that's the issue is that if you play more than one note at once, it's just... And you only have two voices. Yeah. As well. So you could only put two voices. And then that would sound terrible, too. So usually it would be... It would be a sound effect and a, and a note. Uh, oh, interesting. Because it was a big jump between one and two, a small one between three, one and three. Oh, so it wasn't even linear. It was, like, it getting was, worse. This was, like, big jumps, and then... And it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, it's always a nightmare to program. Some people did, did it to some success, and some didn't. <clears throat> uh, so this... The, the, one of the very last games ever released, Pitfall 2, um, had the extra chip on the cartridge. And he used it to be able to make music run the program a little bit faster. So there was tricks to, to doing music while the game was playing. Um, so this one uses Pitfall 2 type of three channel music with notes in tune. Um, earlier version he says harmony does not work, but then he fixed it. Oh, the joystick speeds this up. So that was sounds like the Legend of Zelda. <laughs> yeah. No, I've just seen on into it. I've just seen it notation wise, but it sort of has that feeling of this because I don't think it's only using one channel. I think I can hear it. Well he says he uses uh, three channel music, but uh, I can hear at least two in there. Um so DPC plus has to be done in assembly as no kernel has been made for the Batari Basic, which I'm sure has been changed by now. This has been oh maybe not. This is 2016. Let me know if uh uh Batari Basic has support for this type of music. And it's kind of more sampley. Yeah, you can hear it's kind of Um But I'm not sure exactly how they do it. I think it's something to do with turning off and on noise, a noise channel at a certain frequency, like a speed, so that it emulates a certain sound. I'm not sure, though. Speaking above my pay grade. So, let's... Yeah, I have to think about that, because I've just been doing some sound stuff recently. Um, and, uh, let's hold down the second one. I... Uh, so oh, it's kind of emulating um, digital sound. 
by manually doing it. Yeah, it doesn't like coming out of these because I think it uses some kind of, so just keep holding it down. Cool. There we go. Oh, that was quite right. Oh, oh, yeah. So the next one we're going to do, C, is by Ice Bosta as well. And it's We Wish. Oh, Shoot, Merry Christmas. this one here? Yeah. Okay. Now he's inserted this into... Oh, is it going to work? <laughs> Uh-oh. Ice Bosta, uh, we have your back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Oh, one, uh, one TIA channel. Uh, the new CDF format can use waveforms up on through actual samples. Well, let's try and load this again. Because this is a 32K ROM. Um, it should work, but it's not working. We may have to go on to the next one. Because uh, this was like a, a song inserted into like a Stay Frosty yeah. demo. Um, but early stuff usually gets made on, uh, gets developed on Stella rather than a cartridge first. So maybe it's not quite ready for this. Oh, so no. sorry, I supposed to. Yeah. So it's it's very similar to similar to the last um, type of song. Oh, well. okay. One thing I'll say on this. Um, That's what happens when you try and play things that aren't quite, quite complete. Oh, oh, sorry. Fail. Oh, maybe because I was wrong. Sorry. It just things. caught it when it was off, I guess. Oh, what uh, is happening? Okay, go down. Maybe that'll go away when we get into the cartridge. Which one should we do? So now it's the last one. Uh, Snowflakes? No, no. A very 2600 Crit Xmas by Ben Larson. Let's see if that goes away. There we go. It's a little bit louder. I'm going to turn it down. And this was what uh, the background that I was using before the show. So it had the snow coming down, but I didn't have the music for it. Um, and a very 2600 Christmas, I suppose it says this is using what's available on the TIA sound chip. So how is he doing perfect notes if he's just using what's exactly he's available? Supposed to. No, this was not I supposed to. It was somebody else. Um, but let me read what it says. Uh, it has come to my attention that there's been a disturbing lack of Atari holiday cheer around these parts since 2011. Uh, to rectify the situation, I've taken the liberty of embarking on a crash homebrew project, which I'm tentatively titling a very calling a very 2600 Christmas. Basically, I'm arranging a bunch of Christmas songs for the Atari 2600 using some of the music code I took out of Panky the Panda as a starting point. Oh, did Ben Larson do Panky the Panda? That's an amazing game. As a platformer, it's huge. It's amazing. And uh, it's got really good music in it, too. So, obviously, this guy knows how to make music. I've got four songs so far, which I'm previewing here on this ROM. Uh, the songs are... Uh, Jingle Bells, Deck the Hall, Silent Night, We Three Kings, and he added more later. Uh, use the joystick left or right to change songs. Let's change the song. Yeah. I think oh. it's not quite... Like, now I'm listening to the tune, there's some notes that are almost ghosted, like they're not actually... The, but there's some, there's some intervals that are there. Like, listen to this. That's not... No, I, see, see what I mean? if I played you actual 2600 music using the defaults, you'd be like, what? Be like, well, what is but I can this? tell that there's enough notes that work, and then there's ones that, because we know the tune so well, because I think... Um, oh, yeah, the air is supposed to, I was supposed to sing it, that the, 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 the notes are there, but sometimes need to go low or high instead of the actual note. It's, it's, it's a different Oh, uh, okay. Uh, he said, there's no visuals yet, just literally a black screen. Obviously, this is a later version. Oh, you're right. No, but it is. Oh, that's even better. No, it's fine, it's fine. Um, so he's added Carol of the Bells. Yes, the Fidelis. That's the funny part, that he can hear pops down instead of going I think, I think that's his own influence. He's doing some, he's having yeah. some fun with it. Uh, good King Wenceslas, we wish you a Merry Christmas. So let's go to the next one. Silent Night. 
and great visuals. That's a really nice stylized Candy Cane 2600 and written out scripty font. Snowball. Really, really well done. It's amazing. I like synthesizing music a lot, actually. It's, very, it's a very interesting, I think it really puts you in a certain headspace. Yep. Like these John Carpenter films, a huge part of them is the synthesized music. This is analog music. Yeah. Like this is, well, is it? from a chip like it's yeah because it's, it's not, not digitized it's it's made analog digitally kind yeah of. it's a weird it's somewhere between because <laughs> like it's there's you're obviously it's not there's it's no, not an instrument yeah there's no sound um percussing through the air to then be captured it's yeah. existing on its own thing it's like there's no intermediate because digital is like synth like sample yeah. Digital music. And then process. Yeah. Which is its own weird thing. So yeah, it's, it's really cool. Let's change the song. Oh. Yeah, that's off. Yeah. The next bit. Is he going it gets it? crazy. Oh, is, is he going to do it? Yeah, I'm not gonna do it? Oh, yeah. He'll do it. Yeah, that's funky. That's funky. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> that's a little off. Okay. And I, I it's not gonna have to get you to tune the color. Sure. Because I I did it again today and it's still like it's teal there. Yeah, yeah. It's Actually, slightly. don't look at that's gonna be off. Okay. That's gonna be terrible. But that compared to this. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. That's actually really, not bad. It's close. I didn't do too bad of a job there. Yeah, this one's fun. This is, <laughs> but that's not, we're not criticizing the song so much. No. As this, it's just really interesting hearing, what's exciting is that, that transition between trying to take this like crazy system of like, yes. which I just learned about this 1, 2 to 32, <laughs> and how do you take these sounds and try to make them sound like these very iconic songs that we know. Yeah. And it's fascinating how like you get a couple intervals and it works, and then it's off, but we still hear the still tune. Still fine. So what's funky like about it is... interpretation. Yeah. So the, our, us being like a funky isn't like being like, yo, you did it wrong. It's more like, oh, isn't this fascinating? It's like his own new weird thing. It's it's like taking a really well-known song and transposing it to a, a different scale. Yeah. Um, you know, like a, a from another country. Like, you've, like a sitar yeah. scale or something, and it's like, oh, it's off. But you know it's still there. Yeah, and, and but also that's part of the I guess the, the, the sonic language of like this this weird thing is that yes. it's, it becomes its own thing, which is really cool. Yeah, it is. It's it's so different, and, and that's one of the many reasons why I like the twenty six hundred because it is its own unique beast yes. that you have to tame and and make it work with you and for you. Um, so the next one is a demo. That was put out in 2003, um, so it's the top one. Um, and so, Atari has just been doing this for a while. Right yeah. Atari has just been putting out um, Christmas uh, cartridges for a long time, and I believe this is the first one wow. that they ever put out, so it's not even a game. What was the one we played on the last show? Was like. Uh... Uh, well, we. Where we threw snowballs at each other. Yeah, that was... Uh, which one? Uh, not that one. Stella's Stocking. Yeah. Yeah, so we played... This, this looks like Stella we're looking at over here. Yeah, that's right. That she's might just, be Stella. I think she was in the intro. She just doesn't have um, half of her body. It's yeah. just artistically framed <laughs> that way. Or, or maybe it doesn't exist. Yeah, no, no cool. legs. Um... <laughs> This was made by Andrew Davey in 2003, uh, and he posted, I've been trying to badger Albert into making a small production run of the greeting cart with a special Christmas image. Wedgwood and Franklin Mint make collector's plates, and people buy them every year. Why not have an Atari greeting cart every year? So this was the first wow. iteration of this. This would be uh, could be done particularly cheaply and in a limited production run, perhaps with a special competition label entry as well. Albert's always too busy, so here's a chance to put additional pressure on him. For those who aren't familiar with the greeting cart, there are descriptions of the technique, 
sample images available on this forum. So anyway, what do people think about the idea of a relatively cheap cartridge which does nothing but display an image which is released as a commemorative cartridge for, say, Christmas? So this is it? This is it. So, um, from, the two th from the store page, the 2003 Atari age holiday cart was a 2003 Christmas release programmed by Andrew Davey. The label design was done by David Exton. Cartridges were published by Atari Age. All cartridges were hand numbered in the upper right corner of the label. The only way to get one of these carts was by placing an order through the Atari Age store for $50 or more or by winning one free in the uh, contest. So this was never sold. This cart Well, I don't have the cartridge because it's worth a billion dollars. Really? <laughs> Nobody will sell them. To you because they don't want to give them away uh, and they're like 15 years old now so good luck getting this collector's item though. it is I don't have it I'm playing the ROM just so everybody knows this is before my time um, this is when I started collecting you want grandma to, to see uh, Stella <laughs> just that's on right your screen um, so they kind of uh, before they put it on cartridge um, there was kind of a competition between Andrew Davey and somebody else to see who could produce the highest resolution image on an Atari 2600 using any tricks they could. And this was determined to be the best um, image that they could make. Like, have you ever seen a photorealistic, somewhat, I guess still cartoony, but photorealistic image on an Atari 2600. Yeah. It's usually all stylized and cartoony. But For sure. It's interesting because it's also, that's where also <laughs> part artist, part um, uh, uh, program pro comes in. Because, I mean, when I look at this, it, it, it does remind me of a lot of just kind of artistic images that you see where really, I mean, I would say that it's resolution. This is just maybe me. I, yeah. It's not ridiculously high, no. but the choices of how to deal with the light and shadows to sort of create a shape is its own unique, cool thing. It is. And like, what, how do you use the medium with which you're creating your art? And they had to think about what is possible on the 2600. That's right. Just like any artist would have to think, what is possible with just a graphite pencil? Correct. Or what is a possible with, you know, oil or a paintbrush or spray paint? Well, if you, you know? think about, like, because we've been sort of talking about music, <laughs> yeah. it's interesting because you think about the origins of what kinds of music are being played or so influenced by their environment. Like, if you think about something yes. like... Um, or the instrument you're playing uh, with, yeah. Yeah, like something like a drum, it makes a lot of sense in an area where there's a yes. lot of reverberation. Or yes, something with, like a like, large room, yeah. And someone singing, like, a choir, it makes that, that fits very well in a church. Or, you know, yeah. it's like an electric guitar fits really well in a bar where everyone's screaming because you <laughs> need right. something you need to, to just... Through. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, in, in that way, it's like this image exists because of the medium and the environment that they're composing in. It, there's, the, the relationship can't be really... No, you can't. it can't be separated. It, you have to think about what you're, what you're composing the music in or creating the image in. You can't be separated. You can't just, you know, start making an image and then go, oh, now I'm screwed. Yep. I have to make it with the Atari. No, you have That's... to build it from the ground up using the Atari that's right and working with the medium you have and not you know get frustrated because it's not working with it no you have to think about it and it's part of the beauty of I think these homebrew games is yeah. that it's it's not it's about yes. the imagination within these these constructs yeah that, that, and that's where human human beings I think are so beautiful creatures is yes. we we find a little we someone gives us a playpen of some kind and we will create anything yeah, that's right. And, and on new systems, you can do anything. Yeah. You can do any graphics, any sound. But on this, you're constrained to certain rules, uh, which brings out the best in creativity yeah. sometimes. Like, this is the only system to have a paddle. That's right. So there's going to be paddle games because it, there is a paddle. And those games will be different than... Totally different because okay. those other systems can't make that game. And that is what is great about this system. It is the only system that draws on the screen as it's processing. You have to program it while it's drawing it on the screen. No other system does that. The other ones do screen at a time. You have to prepare the whole screen ahead of time and then go, then press a button and go, draw screen. Uh, uh, the Vectrex. 
is yeah. is probably the only other one, but that's a totally different beat. It's its own deal. You are drawing at the same time, but the, that it, it influences any anything and that the, the kinds of games you would create for the Vetrex is different than the twenty six hundred, oh, and they're different, different mediums. Than, yeah, different than any other system, the Vectrex. And so it's so funny in something like this they say, <laughs> oh, we want the highest resolution. I don't see a higher resolution. I just see a piece of art that somebody's crafted within Atari, yeah. within the rules of Atari, which is very yeah. um, impressive and fascinating. And this this is obviously flickering back and forth between uh, pretty much two images. I yeah. wish I could stop one image and show you, but you can, I don't know if you can actually see it doing crazy things. but. It's flickering back and forth to create uh, the illusion of extra resolution, extra colors oh, I see. on the screen. Because you can s kind of see it in her skin tone a little bit. There's, It's flickering between, I think, red and white a little bit. Yeah, I see that. It's, it's. I guess, I guess the um, Atari is some level of interlace, no matter what, right? It's, yes. It's doing like the the even lines and the odd lines. That's right. And also, you can only fit so many colors on one line you, with the tools that you have. So to get, you know, four different colors, five different colors on the same line, they have to flicker back and forth between the multiple colors like there's reds there's greens there's whites there's a black is see-through um which you know is also in other art forms as well you what do you want your background to be you can yeah. pick a black black canvas and add to the black leaving the black see-through and that's how I suppose I said I uh, just red, green, and blue. Just red, green, blue. Oh, okay. Oh, that makes sense. RGB, right? Yeah. I mean, it's the very Christmassy. And, uh, it, and it's also the foundation of like all, like all like, colors is um, in one color format. That's right. Right. CMYK <laughs> is another yeah. color scheme as well, but on on television screens at RGB, like the basic pixels are RGB so, on televisions. Yeah. So it makes sense to work with those, yeah, and to flicker them back and forth. Well, let's get on with the next one, because this is not interactive, but it is an interesting exercise in in programming and visuals and what... And it, it, it's just, it's also like, you know, it's the very human thing that it's like, what do we want? We want titties. <laughs> yeah, what, what are we going to put? That's it's like, let's the get the highest thing. resolution titties on 2600. Yeah, what were the first things painted on cave walls, oh, right? Oh, what were the first oh, things to put, be put on... So it's let it... Oh, wait a second. Let it's it snow. I remember we did all kinds of pictures. But... <laughs> let it snow. That's the one where... Oh, it's actually part of Dot. Dot because cool. this is a... Um, uh, that's yeah, one. the newer one, yeah. Is, that the, is this the newest one? Yeah, it... 2013, yeah. Okay. So this is part of a multi-minigame uh, system. Oh, no, I picked the wrong one. That's that an instruction fun. file. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, Let it snow. Calm down. down. <laughs> so this is a multi-cart. This is uh, made by the same person who did... Uh, Lead and Omnicron, if you kind of recognize the music, uh, the type of music that's in this. I'm going to turn it down because we don't have to blared with music. Hopefully you can hear it now. And I don't want the echo. This is quite loud. So, this is a multi-card that we're going to revisit later because I haven't actually, uh, we haven't actually played any of the, any of the games on this multi-card. Um, so we're going to do Let It Snow, not, because this is the Christmas-themed show. So this is programmed by Simone Sarah, or Simo. So let's uh, load that up. Uh, it says, hi, here's Dot, a collection of Doris, Omnicrom, and Tint. And that's why it's called D-O-T. And, and they eventually pulled Omnicron out of the collection to be its own standalone. So actually, Omnicron is not in that list anymore. So it's kind of a legacy name, Dot. But they kept it. So let it snow not. Help Santa recover precious snowflakes to be used for Christmas <laughs> night using his absorb absorbing beam equipped sled. Trademark. But be fast, as mist flakes will accumulate on the ground and make Santa's job harder. Oh, we have a graphic for this one. Oh god, oh god, James. Switch that over. This is not... Oh, okay. I forgot the one for last... It's 
hard. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm doing okay, given the... There we go. Oh, we're in a foot here. Damn, I forgot it was early today. Well, you just missed... This is the actual first game. Yeah, we've been talking a lot. Been talking, which is not bad. Showing demos and stuff. Oh, I think you passed the level or something hit something. the ground or... Oh, uh, see, it's like, it's getting hard. Oh, no, they're hitting. Three have hit the, gr hit the ground so far. Oh, oh, now it's building up. Oh, now there's some red, red ones? Okay. Um, but be fast, as mist flakes will accumulate on the ground and make Santa's job harder. The snow accumulates by one layer every four mist flakes. The counter next to the score shows how many flakes have been missed. Holy cow, okay, this is getting... <laughs> every once in a while, uh, a row of red snowflakes will appear. If you manage to absorb all four such flakes, two layers of accumulated snow will be removed. So you really want to get those red ones. Uh, or bonus points will be scored if there aren't enough layers to remove. Uh, controls. Oh, so the red ones will... Oh. Use the left difficulty to switch the music on and off. Rip, 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 rip. <laughs> oh. Use the right difficulty to s switch oh. control the sled with uh, joystick on port 1 or paddle on port 2. Mm. Oh, so we might do paddle. We'll do the paddle after, um, after this. So you get one more turn, then my turn. Uh, press the joystick fire a button tra uh, paddle trigger to activate the sled beam. It's a cool beam. Awesome beam. Yes. Yeah, the blue and white. Well, the thing that's hard about this together. one, that it looks easier than it is, is that you really have a very limited... You don't, like, you have almost, like, chunks <laughs> that you move. So uh, it's really tricky. It's not super smooth. No, it's... Get those red ones. It'll well, remove well, the layer. see how the thing no, is? No, you it's, missed the red It's ones. not... Because you see... Uh, when you play, you'll see what it's like. Because you, you don't have a lot of room. Because like when you move, you move like uh, like an increment, so it's uh, very difficult actually to. The precision is not great. Oh yeah, it's not precise. I bet the paddle, if it has. Um... Oh, would be better. Because like the thing is, you see how like I'm almost oh, jolting. Get the red one. Oh. Well, I'm almost jolting from side to side. <laughs> like it's very difficult to. Yes. To because you see like if I move, it's like. Welcome Pac-Man Red and Arena Foot. Uh, Pac-Man Red says this definitely has a Tetris feel to it. Um, in the way that it's building up levels, like if those snow pieces kind of chunked in, then that would be very Tetris-y. Oh yeah, this like requires be... a, like, a lot of focus. <laughs> yeah. It seems so simplistic, eh? Okay? Well, I mean, to sort of like stay ahead of them. Oh, and it's hard to aim this guy. <laughs> That's the thing. There you go, get that red! It takes, there you go. You have to get all the reds and it takes away levels. Of, uh, of snow. Oh, that's the key to this Yeah, game, to, keep, to keep going, that's how you do it, because it erases mistakes. It's like getting a Tetris. Almost, right? It starts getting rid of the lines. Marina Foot says paddle is better. Oh, yeah. I think so. Yeah, I'm going to give it a try on the joystick. Yeah, so you this. can understand what I've been doing here. Exactly. Just, even just for that, I appreciate it. Because it's, it's, it look, this is a, like, it's, it's, the controls make this one hard. Like, I mean. I really love uh, Simone Sarah's games. They're very simplistic, but very, very fun. And, and they always have crazy music. Like, almost randomly generated music. For the red flakes, Arena Foot says. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. I mean, there's a get it, get it, get it, get it, get well, it. Oh! But, but, but that's one where I moved, and it, it just was right beside it. Like it's like it's not. It wasn't possible to to get that one given my position. Oh, um, Arena Foot got his uh, Harmony Encore cart working yesterday. Yay! Check it out. Because he was having some trouble with it. I mean, that's one method. Yeah, I played this on, on Stella <laughs> earlier. But do you see what I mean? Where it's not like you don't move uh, smoothly. You jump from side yeah, to side. Yeah, you side do. To side. Well, it doesn't erase the mistake you have. It gives you bonus. Yeah, because I had I had missed one, but I'm gonna switch it to oh, you can't do that. You have to just jam the keys, I guess. Yeah. This is like, you, you, you want your wrists to oh, die? Oh, my wrists! <laughs> <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> I 
was trying to be a tactician or and, and, and uh, no, I'm definitely, just definitely the button mashing will, will yield the ball. Oh, my all. wrist. No doubt. <laughs> my wrist. <laughs> Killer. Oh, they're moving now. Oh, now we're getting into the levels. Auto fire, anyone? Yeah. Auto fire doesn't work. I mean, I the just thing turn is, it on, is it, it makes it worse. Well, the thing then is that it almost becomes less of a. It's a weird thing because, like. What? It was in that method. Because, like, you can do this method, but it's almost. It's not, it doesn't feel like cheating, but it's somehow. There's something. It feels like you're missing something about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like you just sort of wave from side to side, absorbing as much. You see how it's tricky because you do you don't quite hit it. Yeah, it's like you a little off. You kind of better. You, you kind of pop from side to side. So like it's it's tricky because you almost sometimes circle around things. You do you you like go on either side of it. Yeah, because it's it's like you're jumping in chunks. It's not like you're almost skipping from side to side. Oh, I need red ones. <laughs> Christmas the Capital, that's right. And the people out there who have not played this game, you can't move while the beam is on. So you can't just um, turn on the auto fire because you can't move if the auto fire is on. Yeah, and your movements are, are it's, it's, a, it's a tricky one, dude. It's crazy. Ah! Christmas Decathlon, pretty much. Yep. Um, have you ever played Decathlon? No. The video game? Uh, there's like 10 events. Some of them are running events. And in those running events, you press the button a lot for a very long time. Oh god. That's the problem. So whenever anybody uh, plays a game where you have to press the button and it kills your wrists, Decathlon is pretty much brought up. That's the one that's like a reminder. Wrist killer, yeah. Especially if you play all 10 events. Because there's like the 100 meter, and then the 500 meter, and then the like the 1000 meter, and you just, you just play forever. Wow. Okay, we might have to switch to paddle. I don't know if this gets any harder. They did start moving, but they're not really speeding up. Well, uh, I'm realizing with your method here, it's 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 definitely um, a little bit easier. Yeah, you just do waves, basically. You just wave left to right, left to right, and if you click it <laughs> quick enough, you're gonna pretty much get everything. Yeah. You let ones through once in a while, but then you clean them up with the red ones. Yeah, so you can go for a while. Play until your wrists hurt. Essentially. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna try the paddle out because I have conquered this game. Oh, they are moving quite a Oh yeah, if you mess up, you're dead. Look yeah. how fast that there's a certain point. A so let's get out a paddle. So it was going faster, I just couldn't notice. So at yeah. some point I probably could have died. Oh yeah, yeah. But know. I don't want to get to that point because I will have to be in the hospital for wrist injury. Well, yeah, it's not <laughs> worth it. Oh. Okay. So one of those. Hold those, please. Yeah. And let me get my instructions because you have to flip one of the switches. I think it's the right hand one. Oh no. Okay. Okay. So, one of those moves him. Oh, yeah, first part. There you go. That one. Whoa, okay, I don't know if we're going to be any better. Whoa! <laughs> it's holy out of control. Crap. So, it introduces a different issue. <laughs> it's just so fast. It's just so fast. It's too fast. So, you have to be really precise. Oh, I think you're doing better. Oh yeah, for sure. This kind of needs an epilepsy warning. Warning! Warning! Epilepsy warning! Yeah, there's a lot of flashing and you lights. Can, and you can kind of switch. Sorry about that. You can sort of switch, like, like things. Yeah, see, sometimes... Sometimes there's, like, certain ones that feel almost impossible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get 
it? There you go. It's so jerky. It's the crazy <laughs> part about it. It's so weird. Yeah, they really look. Yeah. Like I'm like boom, scale the movement I down. Fire! Quite a bit. I can like move so quickly. They probably could have toned down the sensitivity. What? How did you get all those red ones? It's a new level. Oh, okay. You got enough to start a new level. Okay, and it erases the whole screen. I'm like on switching it. wrists, man. <laughs> it's, it's, it's too much. Oh, I suppose his internet went out. I suppose, uh, buddy. He's back though. Welcome back! Oh, the music's better. Doesn't say what level- oh, you made it! You're doing way better with the paddle. Also, you watching, make it to there. watching your method oh, it helps this, this, a lot. Of just basically spamming the button and just like, <laughs> going like almost on sweeps, I think this right? game lends itself to button spamming, Because the thing is, is that like, and then, and if you do that, you can just trust that yeah. like, by you'll the time get you get to the red, uh, you'll, oh. you'll be okay. Like, it doesn't matter whether you get everything. Yeah, you just have to get most of it. And then, and it's a weird thing, it's like, once you get the momentum going, like, you know, you're... you're <laughs> yeah, it's just repeating over and over again. See? Like, see, now it's like back to normal. Yeah. And you just sort of go through. And now I'm figuring out this, like, it's definitely better on the paddle, although my finger is... Yeah, you're le much less jerky now. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's just like, uh, I like anything. It's like learning the, the, the feeling of, like, the controllers, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's hard on the fingers. Oh, man. Pretty flashy going on out there. <laughs> okay, you conquered it. Yeah, <laughs> my turn. See what I mean? It takes a second to get used to this Yeah, it's, it's very um, sensitive. Really, go really nice and slow with it, I think. Once you find that, you can do anything. <laughs> it's limitless. The potential. I, I'm not epileptic, and I can, my eyes are sort of like, whoa. Because <laughs> even like the flashes and everything, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of... Okay. I think we got the idea of this, right? Yeah, you know, the paddle is better. Um, if anybody who wants to do it, I'd say. I don't know. I got really good with the joystick, and I feel like I'm missing more dots, but... I, I prefer the experience with the paddle. I think it's more fun. I mean, it's, it lends itself way better to yeah. the paddle. And yeah. so I would say, like, and that's, a, that's definitely something. I think you could probably do better on the joystick, just objectively, if you were to do, like, the spamming. Like, yeah. but, I, but I think, uh, you know, it, this is easier on the wrists. It is. Which this is a, is a lot huge easier. factor for something like this. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, it is a game that's meant to be fun to play, and, you know... Yeah. You, and that's a tricky thing. It's that line between, I don't want to... You can dominate a game... But like, you know, if the if what, if, what if, if the sacrifice is, it's not as fun, and your wrists hurt. I don't know if you've really dominated the game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, oh. That's nasty noise. There we go. That's a bit better. Okay, so the next game is. Down the chimney. Now oh. this is a not a full test. game. This one here. It's kind of a test. Cool. Um, so it's not a complete game, but it is a complete game. It's just a simple game. But they, but when they posted it, it's not like finished completely. There's no sound. So this was done by uh, Impaler Twenty Six. Impaler. Yeah. Uh, uh, Christian Gier. Gier. Oh boy. <laughs> what is it? Geirgrick? 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 Geirgrick, that's easier. And Dwayne Allen Hahn. Just because of Geiger counters. Ah, uh, or Geiger. Geiger, oh god. Geigerick. 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 Yeah, Geigerick. That's probably that's right. Um, hey, Impaler, you no, showed a, up, dude. That might be a different one. I don't know. Are you Impaler26? Are you Christian? Not the religion, but the person? <laughs> it may be a different person. Mine might be. Yeah. But Impaler, I mean, uh, it uh, might be the Vlad the Impaler. He <laughs> could be. <laughs> still alive. Uh, please so, don't. Please stop uh, murdering. And... Yeah, don't stop the killing. It's not necessary. Stop the impaling. Okay, so go for it. Uh, I think we have to actually press reset. Old school. Whoa. It's made whoa, in 2009. Whoa, okay, um, this. 
So this I is played games like this before. <laughs> um, but look at the, how slowly I move. <laughs> Do you see that? Yes. I think that's on purpose. Oh, oh yeah. Press game reset like, every like, time. Look, 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 James. This is literally. I'm. This is the maximum that I can move. Oh, you have your hands up. Oh. Like, look at that. Look at that. I can barely move. Like, look, look. It's like it's literally. I, I can. I can Santa. I'm like a leaf that's just blown in the wind. Like, like there, there's no adjustment that could be done. So this is actually a port of a Commodore 60, 1983 Commodore 64 game called Down the Chimney. Right? Oh, you have to press a button and, and use the reset. Rough. Get with it. Come on. I'm trying to predict. See, that's not possible. That one. So these are notes from uh, that I've got from Brian Mather's upcoming book. Brian. Uh, Holiday Arena Homebrew Foot? Arena Foot's upcoming Arena. book. Holiday Homebrew Companion. I love which that I have uh, a written intro in oh, that's explaining right. what homebrew is. Hopefully it's not totally inaccurate and I don't get called out for it. I'm certain that it's <laughs> totally fine, dude. Um, so this Down the Chimney was a 2009 work in progress game programmed by Christian Gigerich <sighs> and the scrolling f f uh, playfield code was written by Dwayne Allen <laughs> No, it's not a shitty impaler, it's a What oh, it is your game? Woohoo! That's funny, we just mentioned you and then immediately you yep, appeared. You appeared. It was, or maybe he was there all Your Beetlejuice, man. Yeah, did we you say his name enough? You used the same paler we three did. times. And so how do you pronounce your last name? Geigerick or Gigerick? Geigerick, a G-U-I, or Gigerick, G-E-E. -E. Cool name, no matter yeah. what. Um, Radioactive. <laughs> A different title screen was attempted in assembly James, by Rick's. I'm doing the best I've ever done. You have to make it to 400, I think. What? You're almost there. 300. Oh, God, James. Oh! oh that's the best I've done. Um, the game was never officially completed, but it is playable in its current state. And there is li literally, out of all all the games that um, that, Ar that Arena Foot put in his book, there's really not that many um, holiday games. There's a lot of uh, hacks, but I mean, most of them are, are just simple graphical hacks. Okay, so, so because of how little I can move, <laughs> there's definitely a, a luck factor for this. <laughs> luck? No, you can do it. You it's all skill, you right? You see, like, but I mean, the skill would be if I could move, but I can't really move. Oh! Yeah, so good, like, that's luck. Like, I have to, like, drift. If it goes to... too far, I'm done. Right? Like, it's true. Like, see, I have to sort of put it, and I'm getting closer. Like, oh, see, luck. Luck. Giga Rich. Giga Rich. Oh, R I C R I C H Rish. Rish. Giga Rish. Oh, that's Giga -rish. cool. Giga Rish. Is it like a, a Germanish, like a Gigerish? Kind of uh, like that? Gigerish. I don't know. I don't know. We do our best right here. Oh, oh, death instantly. Yeah, it's, 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 this is RNG. It's, it's, <laughs> a, it's, it's a huge factor in. Uh, what's this called? Uh, this is called Down the Chimney. In, in, when you're down the chimney. Man, it's a long chimney. Oh, uh, yeah, it's full. <laughs> I like to think Santa just throws himself down the <laughs> chimney. For you like... know, it's a tough job getting those presents to the kids. Look at what he has to go through. <laughs> He's got to go through hundreds He's of. getting smashed by bricks of... on the side on a chimney. Uh, it's a 4K game. Where is this reindeer? Uh, this is available like on the Impaler 26 Holiday ROM Pack. Impaler. Uh, you are Santa falling down a continuous chimney chute. Whoa. Avoid the sides of the chimney as the game gets faster and faster the further you fall. Oh, yeah, you're further down the screen, Yeah, too. so it's less you it's see. Less reaction see, time. Like, that, like something like that, yeah, I made a wrong choice. Oh, he is from Germany, so you do, you put a little German accent on it. Germanic. If you're brave enough. I won't do that, because most Psychopath German, chimney. most German accents done by non-Germans sound very racist. <laughs> yes. You know, they're, they're, they're very cruel. It's a beautiful language and a beautiful, yes. like, um, accent. I think it's one of the most beautiful accents. It's a shame that a lot of, um, you know, and stuff or like you know and, and world war ii kind yeah, of it's it's true. almost to make fun of the german accent is almost part of our pop culture which bugs me i dated a german girl and i thought her voice was beautiful yeah um because and did you talk to her about that oh kind of thing? yeah quite a bit yeah. <laughs> yeah she also discussed a lot of yeah a lot of political stuff because she's very politically right. engaged because it's a huge part of your yeah. culture right it it's, is and yeah, education, and World War Two, and all this stuff. So, anyways, I love Germans. Yeah, and it, it, German language lends itself well to. I was in love very with hard, a German, yes. so I love Germans. The German language lends itself well to harder music. Oh yeah, like industrial music. Or... And it's and they're right on the cusp of a lot of artistic things too. Like oh yeah, they're, and Art. they're and they're very um 
<gasps> you made it! You delivered the present! Woo! Now it's my Love turn. It. Now that you've dominated this game. 500. Oh, let me reset you. Nope, it's good. Oh, okay. Automatic reset when you win, luckily. How far Watch can James I make it? James just does it in the first go. <laughs> That's how this goes. <laughs> it fights so hard. I don't know. I I played this. Oh, oh, look at that. That length of... It just... Oh, that was close. One pixel. Oh, I suppose it's like, what does my last name Haas mean in German? Let us know in Taylor. Do. Do Haas. No. It's Haas different. is a different word. Is it? He said, um, I, I plan to rewrite uh, down the chimney from scratch next year. Hopefully I can make it fun to play this time. No, Impaler, this is fun to play. My only tweak would be I'd love to be able to move my guy a little, little bit quicker. A little faster. Because it's a, even just a tiny bit quicker. That's all you need, dude. And you yeah. can make it go a bit longer, too. Because you, you literally can't avoid some things. You're just going to die no matter how much skill you have. Oh, yeah. Haas could be rabbit spelled wrong or house or hate or... Uh -huh. Oh, so it is Haas, yeah, in, as, as in the very firm, uh, famous German band, Rammstein. Oh, everybody... I guess because you, we beat it, there must be another second. No, you press the button, you just didn't do it. But it's just like another deadly thing that is, makes it even harder, so I'm not going to press the button. It's, it's something I think they thought about adding, um, maybe on the second level is bricks falling, and you have to avoid those too. But I think it's hard enough on the first level without a brick falling on your head that you have to also avoid. Oh. I suppose this, it means rabbit stew, Haas. <laughs> rabbit stew. Is that right? Wow. We got some discussions about the origins of... of Haas, Michael's name. Yo, he said, I, I have to use fixed point math for smoother movement. Cool. I don't know what that means, but if it gets smoother movement, that's dope. I'm almost there. Hey, Woo! James! Fixed point math. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. I know there's a sub-pixel uh, movement in Atari because of the, of the... There's only 160 pixels wide. So to move left or right in a game, you either move one pixel per frame or you have to use sub-pixel counting. You have to use move half a pixel per frame or a pixel every two frames. That means you have to have a larger movement and then kind of divide it when you ah. go to calculate that movement. I'm not sure if that's what he's meaning, fixed point math. Maybe. That makes more sense. It does. So we have dominated this game. I'm going to try with that brick and see if it actually kills me. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to... Yeah, go for it. I don't think it's going to be possible to avoid the brick. Oh, it's possible. Oh, oh, it's just, oh, this oh, is I a, did it! A lot of this game has, is, is a lot of luck because yeah. of the, the way that... Oh, he meant he did mean sub-pixel movement. Oh, the brick continually falls! Oh my god. Okay. You can't get rid of the brick once it's there. Yeah, and then if you wanted to add like le like levels, you know, like you maybe each time it gets farther or faster, because you can yeah. you, you know can start easier. Definitely. That's right. I mean, I, I'm I'm under two thoughts when so it go comes for the brick to part. when it comes to something like this, um, because I think that on one level it's good to have the infinite tunnel kind of ideas, very cool. Yes. But on another hand, there's something nice about the feeling of completing a level too. So yes. you might be wise to do I don't know like a few different. Just like, you know, it gets longer and longer and longer so that you feel like, oh, I've completed a couple things. Yeah. And different shades oh, of red. See that? Different shades of red as it goes up. One more time on the brick. But you did avoid the first brick, didn't it's you? It's just another brick in the wall. It Jeez. is. Oh, well, that one's not in the wall. <laughs> oh, God. I did see Roger Waters live. Oh, did you? And, and I have seen Pink Floyd live. That too. would be not together, that would but be an insane. I'm, not, I'm not that old. <laughs> I haven't seen them together. Yeah, but seeing but yeah, see them separately, it was amazing. Be great. Yeah, actually, uh, Roger Waters is really, really good. Oh, I mean, he really puts effort into his kind of shows. Oh, see that brick makes it hard. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next game, which we can't actually play. These cats are getting into trouble. They are. They're they're trying to mix the show now. Oh, why isn't this door open more? Did you cats close it? They sure it's did. It's hot. I have to wear a sweater today, which I don't normally wear. Okay. 
Oh, he set. says, Impaler says, I plan to uh, start with a wide chimney oh. and make it uh, narrower at each oh, level. Oh, yeah, I can get narrower and narrower. some kind of enemy or, or, or boni. <laughs> boni. You mean so bonus? multiple bonuses. Boni. Dude. <laughs> That's a new word. I've never seen that no, before. No, it's, it's legit. It's just... Um, Super legit. It's just uh, the, the, the German uh, handle of linguistics <laughs> is, is always superior. It's more precise, which is good. <laughs> Okay, so the next one we can't actually play, unfortunately, but we're going to play it. And I'll show you why. So it is uh, Snowflakes. Snowflakes, I'm going to hit it. And it has to do with um, color, actually. Really? So if you can actually figure this out, I, I tried for half an hour <laughs> to get it working. Oh, let me uh, switch that over for everyone. Okay, so what is happening here? Well, besides that, um, so this is made in 2017 by Jacob Cotterell. Cotterell, aka. Just, just turn it off and back on. Yeah, I think we're dead. Yeah, let's do that. Didn't I'm experience that. Hold this though. down and hit yeah. on. Whoa! Everything's backwards. Just turn it off. That's weird. Yeah, turn it off and back on again. That was weird. Everything was backwards. There you go. Okay. Um, we just so entered the. Twilight upside down. Yeah. Oh, the upside down. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so the background is supposed to be blue. See this color here on my screen? Or everybody uh. looking at the cartridge? That's the color it's supposed to be in the background. And there are white snowflakes falling. So the difference between the white and the blue on our TV <sighs> and out there... Like, even if you fix it on the TV, it, we'd have to fix it on there, too. And it would just take too long. So, yeah, you can't see it. It's terrible. <laughs> so, it might have been a bad choice. But on the emulator, on Stella, it's it's fine. You can kind of, you can see it. It feels inverted. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it feels like a negative, almost. Do you know? Like, the blue... Like it feels like the 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 blue background, like the paddle is meant to be switched between uh, color or black and white. Oh. What about that? Go down to. Oh yeah, try it. I mean, it won't affect it if the guy didn't program it in. So no, it doesn't work. <laughs> what about uh, like left difficulty, right? No, it, you could try, but I don't think it's gonna do anything. Uh, and then try the other one. No. And then I'm gonna switch back to color. Yeah, color BB is the defaults. Um, no, so inlet, that's why. Good, good, good suggestion though. I mean, you yeah. never know, right? It's good to check that stuff. Yeah. So, see on the emulated version here. Um, yeah. It, it's it's that it's that background is it's that it needs to be baby blue. And I'm gonna show everybody. Yeah, worth a try for sure. Thrust. Here we go. So you're you're not gonna see us for a second here. Uh, we're going to play the emulated version. Uh, one second. Here we go. So you can see that in the emulated version... You're catching snowflakes. We're catching snowflakes. And but and, and the color should be different. Like, see how different it is the, between the blue and the white? You know what it is? It's just the background, man. Like, yeah. everything else is fine. It's just that main ba background is... It looks like it's the same color as the snowflakes. Yeah. On, on this version, but on this version, it's like a baby blue. It looks like the sky, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't blame the television. The television's old and terrible, but I should be able to get these colors out of the... Oh, you know what? I know something. That might work. James! <laughs> One second. So let's switch back. Oh. Weird. Okay. I have a button on my Atari... Uh, that's part of the RGB. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. What was the set button? Oh, yay! Oh, it's all weird here, because I've <laughs> calibrated it. <laughs> Let me try and fix it on here so it's not purple. Um, that button switch pal palettes, so oh. different color schemes. Um, so maybe would, I've had it on the wrong color scheme this whole time. Would that affect other games? This is going to cut you out, everybody, for a second. Oh, it crashed. And you? But we will be able to actually, I think just a hue shift will fix this. Cool. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. 
That's nice. I wonder what other games look like with this color space. Probably proper? <laughs> Maybe. This is probably the proper ones. Look at those brain meats working, Gretem says. Yeah, we figured it out. We got we got some smarts. You know what? It's 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 the reason why we do this stuff, you know? It's probably why I could never get the colors right on all the other games because it was on the wrong color scheme. Well it's not on until, my RGB board. But man, this is the way that it goes, dude. It's like it's not until you, you take You're something forced. through its it through its rungs yeah. that you really understand it. Yeah, even oh it's still a little purple. Let me see if I can get that a bit better. Everybody's been complaining about my colors for a long time. <laughs> Guys, did we just crack the code? Thank you. What's the name of this oh, game? Oh, that's nice. That's nice. This this one's Snowflake. We did Thank crack you, Snowflake. the code. Thank you very much for fixing a lot of problems that we've been having. Uh, thank you, Jacob. Um, so I made a goal to make this game for Christmas Eve in one day. What? In Batari Basic. Okay, that makes sense. I didn't have much time, so the game isn't really that great. This but so hopefully bad. you'll enjoy it. It's got a score. I mean, it's we got know, some difficulty. We know what this is. You're not, we've played this game before, so that's nice. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that we, like, like it's obviously its own unique thing, but, like, I mean, we've all played Breakout. We, yes. we all play Pong. Like, there's an idea. Kaboom, there's, catching We things. know what's up. Like, it's like, oh, yeah. okay, the thing's falling, and we got to paddle, <laughs> and we got to capture the paddle. And also, you're not winning every game. <laughs> so there is some difficulty. Hell yeah. Well, this the cool thing about this snowflake that I appreciate is that it, it does, it's hard ish to predict it so is like oh like yeah, you see that right went, around so like you you think you you got it but then it you know flips between retro the happy hour is says he's a little colorblind dish here so yeah some of these games may not translate if the two colors that you're colorblind for are on top of each other or you Sorry, need to discern buddy. them so hopefully this is fine white and blue for you um i'm so it, lucky i'm not colorblind because of my job um, like well you wouldn't be doing it like it's impossible <laughs> Like, yeah. it'd be po impossible. I had you could do everything but color correction. You know, Christopher Nolan's colorblind. Really? So he doesn't do the color correction? No. He's, he uh, can do everything else. Mm -hmm. So he has, he's never seen his movies in the way we see them. Wow. Which is really interesting to think. It is. So he might be making suggest, like suggestions for his movies that translate in a way that we see them, oh, that's a Christopher Nolan film because it looks this way. But, but it's, it's actually because of his color blindness. Yeah, that's right. And he loves film. Film is his favorite because I think it uh, makes more sense because if you don't really, if you're not seeing colors in the same way, film is very textured in terms of its layers. Yeah. So I suspect that he appreciates the layered aspects of it because it's it's definitely better in terms of its texture. Yes, um, it so, is. Oh, yeah. So I think that's a huge part of it. So this is pretty good for a game in one day. Oh my god, yeah. Like, it's got a goal. It takes it's some got... focus for sure. Like yep. I mean, I'm not. I, I can't. I I gotta pay attention. This is not a hangout game. I, <laughs> I mean, it is because yeah. I can I can I, I can multitask. But it's like if I want to do well, it takes some time. <laughs> now, you see, that's things that could make this game better. You can make it more into a kaboom where there's multiple snowflakes, and you slow it down a bit. And you have options for bigger, smaller paddles. There's power-ups. You could yeah. have multiple clouds dropping them. Different layers. Um, yeah. And you could also have that snow build-up thing, like in the other game. See the snow at the bottom. If you miss one, it could build up like that other game. Yeah, it's, it was nice because it's a bit ruthless, the fact that like you, you don't get one through and game's over. Yeah, it is a bit ruthless. So you could... You could balance out the hardness with lives, almost. But for one day, this is an amazing, amazing start. Yeah. Um, and Pac-Man Red says, it's only missing sound effects, but all in all, it's good. Yeah, it has no sound, uh, because you make it... You could have put sound in. You could put simple sounds every time you get one. Bip, bip, bip. Yep. Yeah, something like that. So let me give this a try. Let's see how this goes. Oh, it's randomy. <laughs> <laughs> it's it takes some time. The snowflakes are it, it, flopping around. It takes some time to get used to. Whoa! Well, you start to learn like aim for the middle of the paddle, and yes. then it'll kind of um, circle. And you almost have to try and. Oh, well, the thing is, is, if it's going towards that wall, you're wise to just jam right up against it, right? Yes. It's like almost. See, that's like a good technique. And you know where it's going to fall because if you follow the cloud where it is when you catch it. Head towards that direction, 
it's because yeah full when it's coming up against there. the wall it's the best oh, just great. to jam yeah. against it because yeah because you're because you actually uh, you eliminate one one of the things it can do we can make stella better if you tell us differences uh in color no what do you mean stella yeah oh stella is the emulator that i was just using there to play the game on my computer um but i'm not sure what thrust is talking about for differences like what kind of differences are you talking about color differences or a different kind of differences oh yes i think he is because stella is an emulator right and it is emulating color too oh. it's interpreting color as we see it on a pc screen as opposed to real output from an actual machine but a of course, that's subjective a little bit, too, because of t TV calibrations, right? Um, maybe you could make a major contribution to, oh. the, to the Stella architecture of uh, contributing the understanding of color on different outputs. Sure. Because you could, if you were able to calibrate a television and hook up um, an Atari to a calibrated television and then give accurate uh, color temperature and measurements and and give them like actual numbers that they could use to translate onto a calibrated monitor yeah as then well. we could we could know totally that. sync it up oh yeah. i could do that um and that, that would be like a couple hours yeah and right? i've, I've... this up through rf um, my rgb to a calibrated um monitor I mean, it's also going through Framemeister, which also adds in color issues. But if you make it flat, that would be, uh, yeah, that's interesting. It'd also be what fun. Think it'd about be that? fun for me to wrap my brain around it too. Yeah. Where I, where I do have a huge advantage is I can see so many nuances of color because it's what I've done for so long. So like, I can definitely see the differences and know how to change them. Yeah. If you, um, for people who don't know, uh, Erlen works in the film industry as a colorist. Yeah. One, one of his jobs. He's primarily director writer director but it was, that's, you are a, you know how to color yeah and i know how to do color calibration and i've and I, I deal with projectors a lot too and look at look at just images and wrap yeah. my brain around them so yeah and you know like you have a color calibrator that can read color like um like exact precision color amounts right um i don't but that's oh. that's okay i can get one it would be great to okay, have one I um, I've used, I've rented them in the past oh, and used them okay, to sort of, okay. and I, cause, cause it's, they're very expensive. Yeah. They're and, hundreds of dollars. And so I'm well, not very expensive, but they're a limited tool that you use for like a couple seconds. Yeah. And, and then you're done with it. So I've rented them for like $15 <laughs> and then use them for the afternoon. Uh, and then, and I do that every like six months. Um, so like it makes made more sense to me because I was like, you know, literally if I do this for three years, I still haven't. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah. And then, and then I can rent a better one each time I do that's it. That's right. Um, yeah, rather than being stuck. Yeah. Cause it, there's a lot, a lot of new, and also like different monitors have different challenges. Like LED monitors are different than, um, plasma monitors, which are different than like, you know, so it's just, it goes on and on. Um, better create an issue on GitHub and provide your input there. Awesome. Um, referring to Retro Happy R, I do know from experience that colors in Stella on the and on the console are different. Doesn't um, surprise me. Yeah, because I have a bunch of different Ataris as well, which would have different outputs. It's also challenging because your TV has a huge influence <laughs> over that, especially if people are playing on CRT um, compared right. to something like uh, now. That would be totally different. Yeah. So and analog versus digital and all that oh stuff. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, because I have some really nice CRTs. I have some Commodore monitors. That yeah. Really nice color. Well, the I mean, nice they're thing not is... very tunable. Yeah. They've got tint and contrast. I think that's it. Yeah. And brightness. Tint, contrast, and brightness. So you can't do a much with them, but that's an interesting uh, thing to do. Project. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we could uh, film that. That would be fun. And talk about color on the Atari. Yeah, and wrap our brains around yeah. all this stuff. And how it relates to the RGB board as well. Interesting. So that is... What you might discover is that if you buy a nicer TV, it'll look better. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that'll be the uh, instant conclusion. <laughs> and also, if you calibrate your TV, it'll look better. Yeah. And if you have a nice...
clean output but from your yeah, console. Yeah, yeah. Those better. will be the first discoveries, and the second discoveries will be a lot more technical. Yes, that's right. So that would be a nice thing to give back to the community. More. Um, so the, the last game is Reindeer Rescue. Oh, um, Retro Happy Hour says I had a Commodore monitor as a kid that I used with my NES and SNES. Didn't know oh, I had something special. They're really, really, really good monitors. And they are the monitors that populate the Atari Age booth at all their conventions they go to. Like, I'd say 80% of them are Commodore 64 monitors. And I've got, I used to have eight of them, because <laughs> they're so good. Um, but I had to whittle it down to two due to space, unfortunately. I had to give them away. Especially for this <laughs> format, I mean, um, oh, they're beautiful. it's perfect. Um, like if you're if you're wanting to color correct a movie to sort of play in like a like a like a cinema, it doesn't make sense because it's no. a very a very different thing. Yeah. But um, you're calibrating it to DCP projectors. Yeah, which right. is its own challenge. But yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go on to the last game of the day, Reindeer Rescue. Oh, dude. And where did our Atari box go? Uh, plug the paddles in. Which, I like that noise, because it kind of tells us that we're doing okay. <laughs> there we go. I like that little noise. I'm I so know, used I to it now. I kind of miss it a bit. No, are you going to be trouble? Are you going to be trouble? He's talking to his cat. Yeah. Not his computer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want my computer to give me trouble, either. It's just, yeah, it's just James would talk differently. This is the bad cat. This is, this is Pixel. Meow. He's a really nice cat, though, when you yeah. get to know him. But he... But he likes he likes causing trouble, as most cats do, you know. Reindeer Rescue is uh, one of my favorite holiday games, says That's Taylor. I left it to last. Best to last. James' curation. Yep. Continues. Okay, so this is made by Bob Montgomery. So Reindeer Rain, Rescue Rain. in 2006. Yep, that's the one. And Nathan Strum on graphics. <laughs> Redham says he looks so tolerant of the manhandling. Well, for a short period of time. Now, he'll, 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 he'll freak out if you... Uh, Oh no. Yeah. This. Oh, we're back. I'm going to turn the volume a little bit on the music there. So, this is Reindeer Rescue. It doesn't have a stable picture 100% of the time, I think. Or maybe we're okay now. Um, so, let's uh, go for it. And see, uh, see what happens. Hell is oh. <laughs> I love just throwing you into a game. No instructions. I just jump. What do I do? I just jump. Come on, buddy. Come on. Oh God. Rip. <laughs> that, uh... Squish. So, Reindeer Rescue is an original homebrew game written by Bob Montgomery, author of the captivating homebrew game Go Fish. In Reindeer Rescue, you must help Santa rescue his lost reindeer in a journey ah! that has you starting at the North Pole. Look, hey. at, look, at, this, look at these polar bears just, just up there. Out. Just Okay. Like Come on. This cat's uh, on probation. Bye-bye. Oh. Nope. Ah! ah! Attack cat. See, he's, hey, he, that, that's, that's, the that's the usual tolerance. That's the level of tolerance that he has typically. Ah. Yeah. Oh, nice holly. Reset. Very, very nice game. Oh, oh, you have to press reset? Oh, it's an older game. It's okay. It's before the standardization of no buttons up here. I'm a fan of that. It is. It's nice. Um, <clears throat> you must uh, help Santa rescue his lost reindeer in a jury. Okay, I have an idea. I have that an has you starting at the North Pole, racing through frozen tundra, ice caves. Ice caves? Suburbia. Do I just jump? Or and just... the big city. It's, it's, I think it's just jump. So I'm gonna wait till I go to the very edge and then jump. Fail. <laughs> okay, this is like okay. Maybe I just have to find the point. Maybe when as soon as I jump up, I have to jump. Uh, but so, Santa is not the athlete he used to be. That's correct. 1943 state champion in the 400 meter. Uh, he has grown a little girthy oh. around the middle. He doesn't quite have the energy he used to, and if it drops too low, he'll fail in his task. Along the way, Santa will encounter many Dude, objects oh, in the move. air and on the ground. There you go. Some will help, some will hinder, oh, so be oh, careful. Oh. oh, thank you. Label. Label. Oh, God. Come on, Santa. Come on, Santa. Come on, Santa. There you go. Buddy. You did it! Oh, okay. I realized I, could, I didn't you realize I could down. run. <clears throat> Reindeer some... Rescue began life as a 2005 holiday cart, given away as part of our annual holiday sale. 
A collaboration between our Atari Age, Bob Montgomery, Nathan Strum, and David Ekstrand resulted in an enjoyable Are those original. Things I'm supposed to get. I don't homebrew. know. I don't know. I'm scared to. We'll figure that out. Okay, so in this a is like, um, come on, buddy. Come oh, on. there's a rescue. Damn. Get that. You got um. Uh, we decided to that everyone should be able to enjoy this great homebrew game and have made Reindeer Rescue available again as a normal, unlimited release. Oh, oh squish. Oh. The game's labels and manuals have been revised slightly to reflect this fact. Is it back in the beginning again? No, no, I think this is this is like a little um, bit further on. Yeah, for sure. I think there's like check. Oh no. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, a little bit further on. Oh, that's a good oh, thing to get. Okay, okay, good. Is that a good thing? I don't think so. Doesn't look if like I know anything thing. about crows, they're <laughs> that with you. Mess you up. Oh, that, that something. Oh, oh god. Okay, so I gotta get some coins. Ah, guys, I'm figuring out this stuff. There's a little snowman. snowman there. Oh, there's one of your reindeer. You have to get him. You only get four to get. Oh, you did it. Oh, next level. Next level. Uh, reindeer Rescue uh, features in-game artwork by Nathan Strum, who has contributed to several homebrew projects. Oh, ma many now. Many. He's the graphics dude. And includes a beautifully right. illustrated label and manual by David Exton, whose brush also graces many homebrew games in our store, including cartridges no. in full color. Ah, oh, this manual. elf. Oh, you're supposed to get him, I guess. Yeah. Okay. I'm feeling like at a certain point I'm gonna pick the wrong spot. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's gonna be a dead end. I'm gonna have to learn. I always think it's the top one that. Oh, you got bonus stuff though. Oh, I think you probably had to get out of it. No? No, you're still good. All but the levels work, reindeer is done. That doesn't look good. Rip. <laughs> Rip. Reindeer. What's that? Oh, uh, who fucking knows? Lots of stuff here. There's so much stuff. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> Do I just collect it all? Anyone have any theories? Uh, collect well, the food. Collect the labels. Oh, okay. Change, change the label. Collect the food. I gotta, I gotta like, focus. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. Is that that's snowy awesome. thing? That snow thing was awesome. And there's a tractor up there. Too. Oh, what's that? Do you have to get that? It's part of your sled? Get it. Awesome. Guys. Santa leaps into action and the chase is on. Is this something this, we get to? No. Oh, it pushes me away. This is also from Brian Mathern's Holiday Hobru Companion. Look, there's an ad ad. Coming soon. Do you see it? To Amazon? Yes. A snow ad ad. With, with the... With the, the TIE Fighter. TIE Fighter? Yeah. X-Wings, the... I screwed it up before. X-Wings are like the... Oh, okay. The, but that's... Isn't that just a snow one or is, is it just a general Just a general ad ad, I believe. Look, there's, an, there's a TIE Fighter. I think I, I think I hit the, the, oh. the, the ship. I don't know. Um, so this write-up that I'm going to read is from uh, Brian Mathern's upcoming book, which will be in stores soon. Um, Santa leaps into action and the chase is on. You need to help old Saint Nick find two reindeer to progress to the next stage. Santa's energy gauge, represented by a string of Christmas lights, maybe you ran out of that, is limited, but luckily there are plenty of seasonal goodies littered around to keep him at his jovial best. You starved, I think, Pac-Man Red said. Thanks, Pac-Man. That makes the sense. The string on the light's bottom slowly go out. Oh, the lights go out. Guys. That's so awesome. Dark. That is some of the best animation I've ever seen. See that? Yeah. That, that swirling snow. It's all in so themes, good. man. You got yeah. Bobcat. You have, like, um, I don't know. Is that, Bottle like... Little snowman. Oh! oh it's on the pit. Oh. Sarlacc food. Uh, no amount of cookies and milk are going to help him, though. If you get crushed against the left-hand side of the screen by the ever-advancing scenery, you only start with two lives, representing Santa's hats. Uh, but you can find more. Oh, you can find extra lives. And get them stolen by the abominable snowman lurking under the ice. So you can lose a life by just somebody grabbing it. man. It's not just Santa's reindeer that have gone AWOL. His sleigh has gone missing, too. Broken into two parts and carried away by evil Christmas-hating birds. Um, so I that you did those, get one. I met one of those birds before. This is what happens when you don't leave nuts out. For the birds? Ah, well, too late for that now. If you can get Santa th them back, it means big bonus. To make life a little easier, if Santa's already collected one reindeer, then proceeds to get squashed, you won't have to start the level over. Oh, oh, in the pit! Oh. His next life beginning uh, near the location of the first reindeer. On level four, the buildings are black, and the background is very dark gray. Uh oh It's good we uh, redid the color. <laughs> that would have been maybe impossible. Um, in the event you lose all your lives, you'll be consoled by a very nice game over screen and your total score. Well, it is Christmas. Beat all four stages, you'll get something even nicer. 
Uh, left difficulty switch is not used for the game. Right difficulty controls the game music off and on. Push the left uh, right to make Santa move faster faster or slower. Level two. Level two. Nice. Uh, press the fire button to make Santa jump. So this is the ice caves. And I don't know if you want to stay on in the top level or... Uh, I didn't help you, I just gave you points. It's ultimately... Oh, see, I should have oh. done the top level. Oh, get it! Get it! Oh, I should have jumped on the top. Um, scoring. Up. Some, but definitely not all, lovely things can help Santa in his quest. Milk, cookie, candy cane, gift, spring, peanut, Santa's hat, lump of coal. Oh, oh. oh that's what you really needed. Get, jump over that! You stole your life. Oh. Rip. Lump of coal, elf. Each item. No, I know it's so hard though, because it's hard to tell what, bonus the, what one is. Or yeah. What's Some dangers. Uh, Just like life, it's hard to know what hurts. Snow you flurry. Good for you. So you have to avoid that. Yeah. Evil bird. Oh, avoid yeah, the evil look, bird. Look at my, look at my lights. Avoid the abominable lights. snowman. You need that. Get it. Get it. Yes. Right, but I'm dead. Look. It yeah. Matter. One one light left, and it's over. The lights are out. Now that you've shown me oh, how to play. Crush! Crush this game. Crush thy enemies. It is a platformer. It's like a forced scrolling platformer. That's right. Which is cool. Candy cane! Yeah, you gotta learn where all the things are for the second level, for sure. Are they always in the same spot? Um, I, 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 my, was my observation. Yeah, I, I could be so. wrong, but, but... Cookies! I think it makes sense. It's harder to do... It's not harder to do random. Um, it takes more memory to keep things in the same spot. So um, now, now if you die, you'll come back to there. Nice. And the platforms are coming, right? That's right, and so my, my recommendation is to, like, once you land on it, just wait. Oh. Before you jump. So you, until you see the next one, and then you can nah. like a gauge. <laughs> I mean, yeah, can, that is better. Though. You can just yes. go for it, but that was my my tactic. Those are good. Yeah, Can't remember those are good. But they don't actually do anything for you. Just points, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh god. Yay! <clears throat> Candy cane. You pretty much have to go down because you can't jump up that That's high. That's right. And then um, you're wise to do the top for the next round. Because the, the elf um, is right there. And also the reindeer are always on the top, I think. Right, right yeah. Um, but then the, typically the health is like, so... Seriously? But you can still get him, you just have to... Uh -huh. uh, there we go. Because the reindeer are the, the goal, so... That's right. You definitely want to stay up. Even though health is on the bottom? Oh, God. This is the issue, right? Yeah, well, yeah. oh, there's the reindeer. Good. But all the health is down there. Ah! Give me the health on the coal. I've only got four or five lights left. There's nothing up here. <sighs> Gonna die. I you got the elf. Which That's is something key. I need to avoid. Oof. Yeah, I got the reindeer. So if the next reindeer appears very soon. Oh, and I need that. Oh. Yeah, this is where I nope. died too. Right? You gotta stay down. You gotta stay down as I go up. Yeah, what, you already... Nope. Don't want that guy. Takes your life. Can I get that coal? Nope. Wait, oh, that uh, guy. Still at the bottom. And we gotta get that sleigh soon, I believe. No, so it's after gonna, this. that's gonna be up. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, but there's cookies down there. But now well, when's got... the next reindeer? I've got a lot of lives. Yeah, so. because you died. Like yeah. it, it, it's a chicken. I don't know. Bonus? I don't know how you would be able to do this one without dying. I mean, uh, stay bottom, bottom, and then go to the top. But you, you have to get that, that that reindeer. You have to. Yeah. So like it's tricky. Ugh. Come on, reindeer. Three left. It's got to be soon. It's been or a while. something to. to re 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 what is that? A second. I don't know if I want that. <laughs> Oh, grab it uh, right away. Oh, what Yay. the hell? 
So now I'm way back again. You can barely make it to the next reindeer. Yeah, it's brutal, man. I don't know how to do this one. Oh, and you and you had you to have to stay that, down. You have to stay down. Or else? I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna stay down. Don't want that. But I need the cookie. Oh, it's full. It goes right to full. Oh, that's huge. Okay. You only need one, really. Yeah, and now so I gotta that's, get back up. you didn't get the sleigh, but... Is that good? Yep. Now I'm gonna go back up, because it's coming soon-ish? I believe so, yeah. The, the sleigh's optional, it implied. Yeah, then screw that sleigh, man. Yeah, because this level is just too Beating hard to get Beating the level is, is the it's... most important. Yeah. That did nothing. <laughs> cool, go. new level. Impaler74 says RR is rough. Reindeer rescues. Whoa, it's fast now. Whoa, you don't want to get caught. Okay. Whoa, no. Rip. You can do it. Now you know how to do it. Let's see if I remember. Because it's hard, there's a lot of stuff to remember. Are you guys seeing those little glitches on the stream? I didn't notice. Oh, shit. You want to reset? Yeah. Just... No excuse for that. It's just... out of rhythm. There we go. This part is actually one of the hardest. Oh yeah, well, it's, just, <laughs> the it's, next... it's just unforgiving is the issue. The next level is more about surviving. And not getting trapped. Yeah. Because there's nothing to trap you on level that, that two. That was about, like, it seems like level three is all about getting trapped. <laughs> yes. It's probably combo of the two, right? Yeah, it's probably works your way out. So, this one's about jumping over things. Next one is about surviving long enough. Oh, it just glitched. Did, did it glitch out there for everyone? Uh, yeah, it is. Okay, so some something is not connected nicely. I'm not going to mess with it right now. Because it could go out. That takes away life. That I just the reason why I like that method is I just can't remember how many there are, so it's just not oh like, yeah helps. That, me. Yeah, it is. It's helpful for the. Oh, there you go. Oh, Full lives. This level. Okay, what do I do? Top. Um, bottom. Bottom for a little bit. I gotta get that reindeer there. I'm fucked. So I think I have to. Yeah, go top. just go top because you can totally survive to the first reindeer, and then you go down, get that cookie. Brings you to full life, and you're golden for the rest. And you go back up. Oh, oh. None of us have ever gotten that elf. Oh, you oh. got it! Oh, you got squished! Oh my god. Rip. Oh. Whatever. <laughs> Done. Whatevs. I'm not, I'm not disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> not upset, but disappointed. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. That's the harshest thing. The harshest thing ever. Oh my god, drop down. Don't See, get squished. Like, that's brutal. You can get him. Elf. Now get up. Yeah, now get the reindeer. Come on. And then the cookie. Yep, and then drop down and get the cookie. I don't know if it fills completely, but there you go. Now drop down. And avoid those snow monsters. You have to jump over those. Or you, you lose your last life. It's very harsh punishment, but... Get out of the way of that. Yep. I have to drop down and get that. to. You're on three left. Come on. Here it comes, I think. Yep. Down. Oh, it doesn't fall. It gives me a little bit, though. So I would stay down and get the next reward. Because the, the reindeer doesn't come for a long time. Didn't give you any energy. Just, just points. points. It's like a bomb or something. Oh shit. No, 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 no. Stay down, stay down, stay down. There's no bonus food on the top. It's all on the bottom. I don't know what that did. Didn't Even do anything. Faster, I think. Oh, your movements? That's good. Oh, uh, here's the reindeer. 
Got it. Oh, just in time. So it's enough, even getting that one cookie. Yeah, now this shit oh, is... Good luck. Oh my god. Rip. Rip. Yeah, don't get trapped. There you go. Oh my god. <laughs> it's fast. Okay. You gotta stay ahead. There's no time to move ahead. Whoa, Whoa. cause see like... Oh, you jump over it. I have to, I have to yeah. land on it and then... This is a proper um, platformer. It's, oh yeah, full game. It feels like you know these the, the what they used to do. Hey, was just the the challenge was so high that like it didn't matter that there was only four levels. <laughs> yes. You know, it's like it's like if you make it to level three, you're doing pretty good. Yeah, it's like you have to work at it, and then you have to nail it. It reminds me of Castlevania. Did you ever play that on NES? Oh yeah, yeah, it's that's a, an it's, amazing. Game. And it's like one of the best platformers ever made. You play the first game, the first level, and you're like, I'm the fucking best. And then <laughs> and then you get to level two, and then you meet some Medusa heads, and you're oh, like, Oh yeah. They're pushing you off, and any and the bo and the bosses are so challenging. My sister is really good at that game. Um, oh yeah, and she always shows me like she was always like, hey, "Do you want to play Castlevania?" I'm like, "That means that I'm gonna watch you play Castlevania. <laughs> That's right. I'm gonna die on the first level, and then your turn, you're gonna beat it." Um, but she loves NES games. And stuff. Oh, nice. She's a big NES player, and she's really good at um like uh she can like Legend of Zelda uh for NES, Castlevania, and then Mario. World 3, those are her games. Oh, nice. Those are classics, I think yeah. a lot of people play those games. Oh yeah, yeah, they're big, big, big name games. Yeah, they're probably the most popular NES games. Yes. Maybe. So, stay down, and we'll go up. There's a bunch of things at the top. So yeah, go down, because you can't actually make this jump, I think. Oh, see? Yeah, you can't make it. So you have to. Damn it! It teases you, but then you can get the elf <laughs> later. On the back, yeah, because yeah. you can go. You're about the same speed as the scrolling, but the elf slows down. So that's how you can get it. But I always was blown away by a game like Castlevania because it didn't have that much level, but you can play it so much because it takes skill to beat. So it's a really neat game for replayability. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the same with this. It's like, you know... There's a lot going on. And there's yeah. variability in this. Like, there's different ways you can win at this. Which is always, always good. There we go. Oh. I get it. <laughs> yeah, it now you, and now you got to drop down to yeah. get that cookie. That's the only way you survive. Yeah. I don't want to distract you, but look, there's a really cool steam engine above you. Yeah. It's pretty nice. cool. Pretty the cool moon. Design. Yeah, everything like that's the amazing. best. That's the best in the game. Hands that's down. so good. Um, yeah, the graphics. Looks like a the spell movement. you would cast in like an RPG or something. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. I mean, Nathan Strom is is the, is the dude for making graphics. And so I love good. the little Easter egg of the ad act. <laughs> yeah, because that's in the snow too. And that's what it looks like on the Atari 2600 game. Because there's a. Uh, Really? There's yep, a... there's a Star Wars game where you have to take down the ad ads. Guys, and you fly the ship. No, I, I just... I, I just... But we can't play it on the show because it's not homebrew. <laughs> that's okay. Oh, that's just for decoration. Da-da-da! See, that... The, that present is a, a distraction. So that it, you're like, oh, present. And then the reindeer comes. Oh, no! Why? You have... You have to Just get that. Back you bit. have to get that first platform. You have to land on that little have thing, to. and then you jump. You don't think you can make it? Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. You got it, James. That's the goal. Oh, good oh my thinking. god! This is hectic. Battle of Hoth. <laughs> That's right. Mm. What a battle Hoth was, friends. No! Oh, oh my dude, god, this, this level's all, crazy. It's all platform. Oh, you can do another round. I think okay. you, you got a better chance this than last this one. me. Because I think that uh, you're better at these games, and we should see if we can get farther in them. Because I think if you had an extra go at it, because um, remember, I messed the, up that. You, you messed up that one, which yeah. was... Um, but I didn't even make it to the first ring here. <laughs> That's the problem. It's just... It's so brutal, that level. Yeah, if you had an extra life, that'll help a lot. Oh yeah, for sure. Keep going with the life. 
But that's, this reminds me again of Castlevania, where it's like you almost, there's like a strategy to like, oh, if I can make it to this point with all my health, yes. then I'll be able to, oh, I can't, I gotta make it this far with holy water, so I can, you know, it reminds me that's of that, right. where you, you start to sort of like push the bar up, which is a sign of a good platformer. Supposedly there's extra lives somewhere in this game. The present might be extra life. <laughs> really, what a troll that would be. <laughs> oh god. Extra life and fills you maybe? Fully? I doubt that. Oh. It's high in the sky thought. Yeah, I don't think so. That would be amazing. But then you'd have to wait for the next reindeer. Yeah, it might be not worth it. God, God knows when that would be. <laughs> oh. Come on. Did you know? Battle it's a homebrew for Clicovision. Clicovision. Oh, so technically is we can... it? We can play it. Um, I am trying to get a Clicovision right now, a modded one. So we'll see if that pans out. Well, you did get it, you just had to jump yeah, from the... just points. Yeah, I just had to jump. Oh, am I supposed to be up there? Yeah. Because I need the reindeer. So, if I get the modded uh, ClecoVision... Come on. And we can uh, play some, play some ClecoVision homebrews once in a while. Then I have to mod my Intellivision. Play some television homebrews. Yeah, cookies are on the ground. But I don't know anything about how homebrews are developed. Yeah, so get ready for, to drop down, yo. For Felicos or in television. Cookies next. Yay! Fills me up just enough. I would go on the bottom because there's that arrow. I don't know if that helps, but I feel like it. it I think so. I feel like it sped you up slightly. I don't know if I'm up. I need to be sped. Like here? Stayed in yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't think there's much benefit either way. Like, you're not getting anything, but I, I'm just curious what that arrow does. I'll see in a second. I see you... No. No, it just... No, it doesn't speed you up. Yeah, so you get the snowflake or the arrow. Woo! Full lives. Cool. Okay, good luck. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Jump. Jump. Oh, oh, I missed the house to platform it off. Yeah, you just, yeah, oh. it's hard. You have to land on each object and then it's land. It's really hard. Just go object to object. That's all you got to do. Ah! Oh. The music fades out. <laughs> so you die. It doesn't stop. It fades away. No! You just got to keep jump. When you make the jump, keep going. Uh, those USB to ColecoVision plugs were made and sold out. Now I need to wait for the next run. I bought one. Those are the power plugs, right? Yeah, I bought one of those. Um, so it's on its way to me. Wow. Because uh, ColecoVision power supply is a piece of crap. <laughs> well, and they're dying anyway. So it's it's an adapter so you can plug a USB power lead into it and power the ColecoVision. Awesome. Um, oh, so the ColecoVision uh, homebrew Star Wars game. Uh, just looks like the 2600 with a speech sample. Cool. Very cool. So that'll be one on the list. So there we go. So that is the end of the games today. So let's take a look at what we played. Um, the first thing was not a game, but very cool. Very Exercise in Atari artwork. Early Atari artwork. Let's look at that Stella's stocking real quick. I just want to see if it matches the oh the okay image, image of because we can see the image there. I'm just curious what's the like the, the actual new cartridge the emulated quick. version or yeah. what it looks like now. Yeah, because I'm curious. Uh, for some reason, they look similar to me. Yeah, so oh, I see that one. Oh, it's different. It's quite different. It's, but it's in the same vein. Yeah, right? I was thinking that. There you go. Oh. Go over oh. a bit. Okay, there sorry guys. I was just thinking Maybe that was... Maybe tilt it forward a little bit. Is that better? Uh, not that much. Just a touch. Yeah, there. Cool. Yeah. Good. I was thinking that that was the same graphic, but it's just the similar style. I messed it up. 
Oh, okay. See, so that's with more proper color palette, I guess, now. Let me load up the uh, emulator version of it. Oh, that's really close. Yeah, it's a little bit more saturated, the one the, on the emulator. So let me show you guys. Okay, so what you're seeing right now is an actual Atari 2600. And now you're seeing the emulator. The bigger one is the uh, Stella emulator. Yeah, this the Stella is more saturated, and its and its contrast is higher. Um, I want to see if I have any effects on that. I, any filters? No, no filters. It's straight. So I make that. It look. Oh, the Stella um, emulator looks closer to like what you would do if you were color correcting. Just yeah, like, just a bit. Just a bit brighter, just a bit more to it, but I, but I mean that's all alterable oh, yeah. here. I imagine so. So now that I know that it was the palette selection that was totally messed up, now I can do the color correction a little bit, like a lot closer to the Stella emulator. The colors look more natural on TV. Impaler seventy four, well played, guys. I never got past level three too. Yay! If I played it enough, I think I could probably get past level three. It's still, oh my god, it's so hard. Pause the emulation and see that it is RGB. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. I can pause it. Um, so there's one frame of it. Oh. It's not pausing anymore. <laughs> oh, no. There we go. I mean, it's hard to see. I see yellow. I don't see much blue. I see green, magenta. I see kind of reddish. Uh, I see some dark. I, it's not RGB. Like there's there's a lot of weird colors. It's like there's yellow. There's, there's a brown. There's green and orange. Magenta. There's there's some blue at the bottom too. Yeah. There's no green. Oh, there's I guess some green. The yellow is green. Oh, there's a little, there's a lot of green in there. There's definitely some purple. There's more than four colors going on. Well, but that's okay because red, green, and blue are combinations of things. Yeah. So, um, it's it's I think. Okay, let's go back to that. Oh, Thrust said I cheated through level 3 with Stella's time machine. Oh, naughty, 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 naughty. But, I mean, if you can't make it and you want to see level 4, that's the only way you're going to be able to see it. So, that's very cool, obviously, the um, the picture. And then we played... Oh, what was that? Let me get my list up, because that picture is not giving me... It was on the dot compilation. Oh, let it snow not. Um... If it wasn't so hard on your wrist, <laughs> pressing the button over and over again, getting those snowflakes on Let It Snow, I think that would be a lot better game. Yeah. And also it's too easy, I find. Well, it's too hard if you don't button mash, yes. and it's too easy if you do, so it's really... And, and it's, it's hard quite, on your wrist if you do, so it's... It's quite the predicament. It needs some retooling, I think, um, to make that a better game so you don't wreck your wrist. Although conceptually it's great, and in yeah. theory it actually works really well. It's it just, it's one of those interesting things where it's like theory and practice, when they intersect, you learn a lot. Because it's 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 yeah. tough when you, to actually play it is tough. But to, I think a, something that could solve it is that you could move while you're pressing, just the pressing lasts for a certain amount of time. So you're like, zzz, zzz, like you're, you're oh, that almost, would be nice. It would be more strategic. You're almost sweeping, sweeping up the snowflakes as you pass through. And it would be strategic because you could only press it for so long. And then it, it has to recharge or something like yeah, that? Yeah, like you could have a 0.5 second recharge or something yeah. so that there's a bit of a, gel a delay, which would yeah, be great. That would work. And uh, Down the Chimney, obviously very early. Um, and uh, Impaler74, is, is that the person who made it? That's right, Impaler. Yeah, Impaler. It was a Paler 26 on the, I guess Paler 26 was taken on uh, on uh, Twitch, but anyway. Um, it's a good start, and I think... Well, it's funny what, that Thrust 26. Well, it's all 2600 kind of stuff, I, right? I guess 7400, <laughs> or is it 7600? It might... Yeah, 7800. 7800, so I can't... It's all multiples of 26. So, there we go. So it's 26, 52, Just 78. Just revealed how much. I know about <laughs> There you go. That's totally fine. It's good to have somebody who doesn't know. It's it's like in a movie. 
where somebody goes up and says, what, what just happened? That's right. What's going on? It's okay, like, it's like Harry Potter explain. and Harry Potter. What yeah. is that one where you know, <laughs> everything is like, mm -hmm. <laughs> everything is new. And why, why do we have owls? <laughs> what, what the fuck is happening? I bet there's a name for that person. Uh, they call it the, the, the fish out of water. Is the, is the, uh, that's is the more plot. of a, yeah, I mean, that does lend itself to having to explain society and how things work. That's right. But more like, yeah, I guess that's right. It's the, it, it is the fish out of water because the idea is... But I think is like, there's another where like the... It may not be a main character, but like the person who incites the ex, ex, exposition. exposition. Yeah. I Mr. bet it's something out. Mr. Else. Exposition. Because fish out of water is more like for a main character. Yeah. Who's always the fish out of water until the end where... You know, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's oh, there's got to be a name for yeah. somebody like exposition that. sounding board or something. Like <laughs> I like I like Mister Exposition. Mister Exposition. <laughs> that's, that that's, works. That's my. But that's a, ambiguous. Whether it's the person going blah blah blah, I'm the scientist, and is going to explain it to the audience what's I, happening. Uh, we we saw a lot of that in John Carpenter films. Mister Exposition. Like in yeah. Halloween, there's the doctor who's Mister Exposition, who's like Mike Myers. Yeah, but he's he a had lunatic. A, and but he was great. He's so the, good. He added so much weight to it and. Like, oh he's my like, god, he's, he's a maniac. He's, he's a killing crazy. machine. No one will <laughs> he's he will not stop. Yeah, you know, so good. Just you know the acting and it's that. so good, right? So, I guess these eighties movies had that shit. Like it's also like in too. like the first Terminator when it's like he's just that's him. He shows up and he's just is it John McClane? Am I wrong? Is that the character? What's in the, the first Terminator he's a bad guy no but the main character just he shows up and all he does is oh, talk like yes. all i'm from the future sure, he will. And there's bad things, things. and yeah because and the terminator will not stop until he's just that's all he does because they didn't did they show any of the future in terminator or is it terminator 2 where in, they showed all in the... terminator 2 it opens with like the future. the future in terminator 1 there is a little bit of a suggestion of it but, but it's much. it's okay. most that's why he needs to do the exposition that's right he's mr exposition yes. in that one so down the chimney uh, made by Impaler. Um, great start. And I think the ideas that he put in the chat where it starts off big and the chimney narrows. Yeah, and if the movement's a little bit tighter. And there's obstacles and things to pick up. And You know what the, 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 the classic like version of that game is, is of which you see over and over and over again, is when it's horizontal and you push a button to, to like thrust up. Yeah, it's like yeah. this helicopter one. McLean is from John, John Connor. Thank you so McClane. much, Gretem. <laughs> I was trying to think that it's it was the John. It was the John. John Connor yes. is a thousand percent thank god because <laughs> yes. as soon as i said john mcclain i'm like that is fucking so wrong that's my favorite christmas movie maybe though yeah it's die hard wow. it's so good it's it's a good movie that happens to be set in christmas. christmas i don't it is a christmas movie but it's not it the only reason those people are together in that building is because it's a christmas party that's right it's not about christmas the film's not about christmas but it still can is classified as a christmas movie that's right yeah but yeah, that's and, definitely... And, and Bad Santa is probably my favorite oh, actual yeah. Christmas movie. Bad Santa But you can't watch wonderful. that with your family. That's... Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. It's too much. And even with your friends sometimes. It's yep. like, You're like, oh, this is a bit far. <laughs> oh, Gretem says the first one is a Christmas movie. The second one just happens to be set at Christmas. And is I will Terminator fight about set at Christmas? It. No, we're talking about Die Hard. Oh, okay. <laughs> I will fight people about it. Cause... I'm with Gretem's, man. Yeah. The, the first one's a Christmas movie. Oh, for, for sure. sure. It very, I, I think very few people argue against it. And I think those people would just be, you know, arguing for the arguing's sake. That's right. Yeah. You know? Uh, uh, Snowflakes, once we get it working, it was a fun little game. I mean, it's a one-day game, so everything is excused. Any game that's made in one day that's a full game, there's a beginning, there's a goal, there's difficulty. It's not too easy and it's not too hard. Yeah. Good it's... on you. That's amazing, yeah. Trevenge. I just watched that trailer. What's Trevenge, is that? If that's the trailer I just watched this morning... It's a but Christmas trees take revenge on humans for killing them and chopping them down and That's putting good. them in their houses. And these tr Christmas trees are like taking axes to people. That's good. And it's just so much blood. And I th I think it's not a real movie. It's a, a fake trailer. Yeah, that for makes, a movie that makes sense. Because sometimes those fake trailers turn into actual movies. People go, "That's awesome! Let's do it! It's so cheesy." And it's always schlock, man. Oh yeah. Which is there's a huge market for schlock. Yeah. You know? Schlock horror films are massive because. 
Horror film fanatics are so forgiving. Dude, they'll go to anything. Yeah. They're, they'll go to anything. They, they, I dated a girl they who love... was super into horror movies, and she would watch everything. Her Netflix, <laughs> I was like, good. I was like, what do you want to watch today? She's like, well, these are like the only four movies I've seen on Netflix that are like in the horror category. And I haven't seen it on Netflix. I'm like, you've haven't. watched every one of these? She's like, yeah, we oh. got halfway through a film. I'm like, this is terrible. She's like, we have to finish it. Hunter like, Avengers is a short movie. Yeah, about oh. 15 minutes. Oh, God, that's great. That's about the right length, I think. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, maybe you could stretch it to 20, 25. Because you could have the, the family go and pick the Christmas it's tree true. out. Yeah, that's and, right. and, and you could subtly hint that the tree is uncomfortable. Don't pick me or whatever. And Teasers just like a man gets off of a truck. He just pulls out his, like, his chainsaw. Oh, yeah, and close then we just up of the, the like, chainsaw starting That's right, up. we just see... <laughs> <laughs> the tree, the tree just slightly, slightly so moves. Small. You hear the sound of blood gushing, even though there's no blood. It's like, oh, and then it's like yeah. true revenge, and then like, the family gets out of the thing <laughs> on, a, <laughs> on a, a diagonal, big, <laughs> crazy font, and, and the background movement freezes. That's right. Revenge. Right as the tree is about to fall. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, we're writing it. I'm sure most of that's in it. I hope so. That's I my teaser so. for for you guys out there. Um, so snowflakes, fun little game. Um, it works. Things could be added to it, but it's fine. For a one day thing. Reindeer Rescue, awesome, of course. Um, very difficult. Yeah. Um, something to maybe go back to at a later date and try and oh, at least was, get level three done. Definitely the game of the night, though, for sure, in terms oh, of yeah. the sort of where they're at and it's. As, as a complete game and, and, and difficulty and replayability. Mechanics. And replayability is a big factor. Would yeah. you ever want to go back and play that game again? because that is the reason you would buy a game is that oh i'm gonna pop this in again and again and it has has um some depth to it that's one of the biggest issues i think with a lot of homebrew games is there that it's re there's not a huge number that are super replayable and not to suggest yeah. that they're bad but i mean a no. lot of the games they're fun for what they were when you played them yeah but you don't think about going back to them necessarily but i'd say that is one that i definitely would think about going back to yes Definitely. And, and it, some are, are like fun and you would go back to them. Um, like we played one on uh, Friday, Bellhopper. And it's very much like amoeba jump. And you're a little bunny that's yeah. you're hopping on bells going up. Um, it doesn't get any harder. <laughs> yeah. But it's just so much fun. You just want to keep playing it. Amoeba jump is probably the most replayable homebrew game I've ever played out of the show. I think that's the one. Yes. James had a retro um, uh, video game night, and yeah. I just played amoeba jump all <laughs> night. Time. There's a bag of, of like um, of like of chips, and I just would like <laughs> I right fail and be like oh, and stuff on the chips. And I go back in. More I did, fuel. I did that for like two hours. And then, yeah. I think I got a I got a really high score. I got the highest score I've ever gotten. And. I still haven't made it to all the levels that Amoeba Jump has because yeah. it has the the white that disappear, then has the blue moving ones. Mappy is super the, replayable. Oh yeah, Mappy that is, is really a lot replayable. of levels. That's um, challenging. That's for sure. I'm, I'm, I know we're missing other ones. I don't. I'm not suggesting those are the only ones, but those are the ones no. that pop to the top of my head. Because if we went through like the list of all the homebrew games, I bet you there'd be more. But oh, but yeah. those are the ones that immediately pop to my brain, which just lets you know that that's that, that, that is a certain criterion, if you will. Replayability for... is a big one. Yeah. Huge, huge. But huge. I would say for sure, Amoeba Jump is the most replayable one. <laughs> it's I can just imagine. so addictive. It's actually addictive. It's in that category. Uh, where's my P.O. Box listed? Uh, yeah, I haven't got to your PM. My P.O. Box list is listed on my Facebook um, under info on Zero Page Homebrew. Okay. If you want to send me all the homebrew that you want, uh, anybody out there uh, who wants to give me presents for Christmas. I, suppose to, I love that question. That's a cool question. It is a good question. Suggestion. Even if it's just a, like a, like a, I don't even know anything. Like Even if it's just a little like 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 postcard from yeah, somewhere cool. that just says hey i appreciate the show you know it's just, it's not about spending a bunch of money uh, or no, giving no. it anything spend it's just 30 cents and i don't know how much you how much but it's just cool the cents. idea that you'd want to send something to james is really yeah. really really sweet because it's That's not really awesome. it's not about the price tag it's the sentiment of you going out of your way to because mm -hmm. who the hell goes to a post office anymore and does anything <laughs> yeah. in this digital world so yeah no physical it's objects are really cool and that's why i I collect uh, homebrew cards because and having that thing that's that why we somebody play on created, console instead of because yes. it's like there's there's something not emulated. It's it's you know it's a visceral thing. It's it's real. You know, 
Uh, your you call it card is in the mail, and your yours is too, Gretams. I know Gretams in real life. So. Oh, what's you card? Uh, Yule is another term for, I mean, for Christmas. Oh, okay. You've heard, you heard of Yule log? Well, I I know yeah. it from Harry Potter because in Harry right. Potter four they have the Yule ball where they all go and. That's but right. I was not. I, I wasn't sure if Gretams was referencing. That. Oh, Harry Potter. Maybe. I doubt it. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> but, but it is a traditional word. It's a real word. Okay, not, cool. not a Harry. That's Potter where I know it from, which is sort of embarrassing to admit. But <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? They're very popular films and yes. books. You don't have to be embarrassed. That's right. That's they right. didn't work for me, but they work for millions of people, and she's a very rich person. <laughs> you take it rowling, man. <laughs> yep. Um, it's a reformed holiday day celebrated by pagan groups. Oh, yeah. so it's a pagan word. Dude, that makes so much sense why they use it for Harry Potter, because everything's pagan and, uh, and, and, yes. and that sort of myth mythology, if you will. I love those books and movies. So, so the end of the year is coming. Yes. 2018 is coming to a close, which means we're going to figure out what the best <sighs> games, homebrew games of 2018 <sighs> is very soon. Yes. So midnight, December 31st, uh, 12... 11.59.59 is the cutoff for homebrew for the 2018 Atari Awards, which are, will be coming in the new year, hosted by myself. Everyone's going to be That's there. Right. Tanya's going to be there. The whole crew's going to be They're there. They're going to look a lot better dressed than I will. Yeah, have but, a nice little But I will dress up to the best that I can. Of your limited wardrobe. <laughs> That's right, my very limited <laughs> wardrobe. But I will wear my nicest clothes, which you'll discover what those are. So um, it'll be a little bit artsy. I'm gonna <laughs> say. And everybody out there is gonna be voting on what you think the best, uh, best homebrew, best work in progress, best graphics, uh, best sound, best original music, things like that. Best hack, best demo of 2018. So uh, that will be coming. Uh, that vote maybe late January. We haven't set the dates. Um, it is gonna be a tough choice. There is it's quite a list Taylor. to choose from. Um, we are going to have a um, selection of choices for you. It's, it's voted be, by the community, right? It's it not, is. It's not, you're not deciding, and that's important to... We are going to narrow down the list, though. For sure. Because we don't want 100 games every category, because it would overwhelm people. So we're going to have about 10 to 15 um, Perfect. of the best. It's decided by uh, myself and Brian Mathern and some other uh, experts that really know about homebrew. Um, <laughs> not me. <laughs> Sadly, I don't mind. I'm. 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 I'm I mean, just, you have played a lot. I'm of just them. suggesting that there's there are there are some experts out there that. But you that, have to know, will... kind of all of them, because if you haven't played all Correct. of them, you can't say that one is not good. Are the categories set already? The categories are not set already. Um, we have kind of an expanded list of categories, and we need to shave off a couple because we don't want to have too many categories it's going to be overwhelming maybe we can add more uh in a later year and people have given a lot of suggestions for categories like a massive amount best 4k best 8k best six we can't go that far because we're going to give out actual awards yeah and i'm not made of money because i have to finance this and uh <laughs> that's a key to this yeah, process it's, it's not to, going to be, to be cheap so we have to keep keep it down the the number uh there are titles i have not heard of yes and we're going to give links to all of the games of, of all these that are going to be nominated. So you can try them out, download the ROMs, or watch videos of them and evaluate it yourself. Um, taking a look at the graphics and the sound and everything else. So you're not going to be left out in the cold if you have not played these games. Because you'll have an opportunity to play them before you vote on them. Um, so it'll be about a list of 10 to 15, I think, that you'll be able to choose from for each category. Um, so that, we're going to actually, we're going to close it December 31st, obviously, because it's just games that were released, either a work in progress or a finished game within 2018. And then we're going to narrow down the categories in the month of January. And then sometime, maybe late January, that's when we put it out to the public for you to vote on. For probably about two weeks so that we give enough time for everybody to evaluate the games maybe a month probably not a month that's a little too long and then we're gonna host the 2018 homebrew Atari homebrew awards on this channel live 
and we're going to have all the winners, if they want to, and if they're available, live through video teleconferencing, I guess. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, whatever we whatever we can do to sort of facilitate that. I mean, yep. I, I, I just get and something. Get them in either voice too. We can have just their voice if they Call don't want to be seen. However it works. Yeah, so we'll get all these people accepting their awards and give a little whatever speech and it's like wrap it up, wrap it up. Start that's playing right. the music. No, no, no. Well, There's no time limit here. We're not bowing to commercials. It'd be a fun evening. That's the nice thing. Is this is yeah. like a celebration of everybody's work, it sounds like, because, I mean, 2018. Oh, yeah. That's what it is. And when did the show start? When did you start working on it? The award show? No, this, oh, this, this show. Zero Febu page. February? So this, so it's in, March? in some ways, it's sort of like a, in it's a almost the year anniversary of the show, too, in some yes. ways. It's not quite the year, but, I mean, that's if you started in February. Yep. And and we're go after the nominations happen, on this show we're going to be going through those and playing them oh. all the nominated games very quickly because we played most of them. Before. Yeah, but it just gives a sense of things, which is yes. phenomenal. So people can actually actually see, oh, that's what that game is. That one. Is yeah, that and one. then you can pick ones you might want to play, or even just assess how they yeah. look from from that area too. Yeah, yeah, we can make comments on because once the nominations are done, it's up to the folks out there. I don't want to. Yeah. We don't want to influence. We'll be wh what we'll do. I, I think um, so this is the one for best graphics, and we'll yeah, play all the graphics. And game. I don't think we will comment on our opinions about them at that point because it's probably it's, not a good we, idea. we don't want to skew. We want you to make your mind up. So we'll just play them, um, and, uh, and we'll say awesome graphics each time. <laughs> that's right. You know, we'll 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 still we'll have fun, but I I will we won't be like oh vote for this one or don't you know we'll we'll try to stay unbiased. Actually. Because more likely it'll be like we'll be going through the nominated games because I know some games will be nominated in there more than go. one category. Oh, there's, there you there's go. definitely games out there that are like so good with graphics and sound. Well, Mappy would be Mappy's probably going to end up on the top uh, in in every in a lot of categories for sure. Cuz it, and it's also a, a team of people who are who are so talented that have worked so hard and put so yeah. many hours in that it's it's, uh, it's going to be be hard competition, but there's going to be a few games like that. It's, yeah, it's going to be know. 10 to 15 to choose from. Um, so it's not going to just be mappy <laughs> clearing. And, and if I Maybe know, it will. Who knows? It's up to you guys to vote. And if I know anything about awards, there's always sort of little surprises. You, you there never... There is. The second that you think you know what's going to happen next, I guarantee you something switches. Yep. You know? Even when they open the envelope, you might get the wrong envelope. Yeah, you <laughs> never know. <laughs> no, we won't get the wrong envelope. So it'll, be a real, it'll be a fun day. I'm looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah, it'll be fun. Um, so we'll be doing that live. Um yeah, we're going to be going through the games probably uh, after they're announced. So it'll be like the fourth week of January, early February, cool. that we'll be going through them during the voting, while the voting is taking place. So there you go. And having and, fun. And always having fun. That's, that's, the, that's number one. thing, you know. We're, we yeah. always have to remember. And that's something I want to say to everybody, too, is, you know, look after yourselves this Christmas. It's, yes. It's a really hard season. A lot of things can happen. Yeah. Depression is dangerous high. out there, too. You know, just really, you know, don't make any life-changing decisions no. between now and January. Just enjoy yourself, get through the holidays, play some games, spend some time with your family, go do the things that you like. Now's not the time to decide things or to ramp up or take on new projects. No. Now's the time to let go and... Enjoy yourself and correct. relax or do whatever you need to do during it's this time. really important you all look after yourselves. It's a yeah. tough season and it's just how it goes. And if you're feeling depressed or upset or play anything... Some games. Play some I games. Because I know all of you watching like Atari games or video games in general. So and go to that if you're having some trouble. And talk to your friends and your loved ones and everything. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's Unless you hate them. Unless you hate them, in which case... <laughs> but, well, you if know. they're your loved ones, you don't hate them. So <laughs> but just look that after works yourself, for everyone. It's tough times. And Thrust26 says he's completely relaxed. Impaler. Stop my face with the cookies. It's a, yes, that is perfect the solution. technique, Impaler. Now is the time. You need extra warmth extra you know girth on your body right. to survive through the cold winter to so cookies are a good way to do that so thanks everybody for watching impaler 20 uh, 74 of these numbers paler 74, 74 thrust, thrust 26, 26 gretams i is supposed to um uh, uh, retro happy hour was oh that? yes retro happy hour uh, pac-man Pac red. red um oh. i know that uh, Arena a... Foot jumped in for a second. He maybe he was at work. Was and that's he probably popped in? Why. Yeah, Arena. It, just because of the funky hours, we switched around on you. Yeah. Um, 
uh, Ground the, Trooper. Ground Trooper, man, always yep, here. Always here. And I think that's everybody who talked. Maybe we missed somebody, but if we did, And we learned we'll about apologize. Germany. We, we played some <laughs> games. It was, it was We learned. Good. We laughed. We loved. <laughs> it was a good time. <laughs> it was good. And thank you for tuning in. I'm glad you all enjoyed the show. And uh, we'll be back. We won't be here on Friday because it's, it's too hectic right now, but we'll be back on next Wednesday. Um, maybe, maybe you'll be here, maybe you'll be early, maybe you'll be late, but just keep checking um, the Atari Age forums. That's where I keep it We're most up to date. We're definitely winding down, though, for Christmas, so we'll yep. see how everything goes. So there's two more shows in the year um, for Zero Page. It's next Wednesday, and then the Friday after that week's Wednesday. So on the 28th, I think, something like that. And um, yeah, you're welcome for the uh, for the stream, and thank you all for tuning in. And uh, oh, Pac-Man Red is the sprite maker. Yes, he is an amazing. You know those Halloween sprites? Yeah. He made those. Dude. He is an expert amazing at graphics. Amazing work, Pac-Man. Um, he's so talented at making eight and sixteen um, width um, sprites. They're so so good. So. Um, yeah, check out his posts in the Atari Age forums. And thanks for so uh, many graphics. And I'm sorry about your. He did a lot of Castlevania graphics. He did. Too. Yeah, the they're fuck out so of here. good. They're so good. Dude. Also, am I supposed to thanks for sharing your music? I'm sorry that one song didn't work. If yeah. you can get it to to work, or we can I mean, put it on the can, next show. Yeah, we'd love to. I didn't wanna. I, I wanted to, to bring that up because I love your music. I'd always love to hear more of it. I'm yes. supposed to thank That's you for great. sharing it. So um, that's it for now, and we will see you next Wednesday at either 11 a.m. or 6 p.m. Sounds good. Uh, Pacific time. Yeah. So see ya. Have a good holidays uh, so far, but we'll be here before okay. Christmas and stuff. So see you till next time. Bye bye.